The following is an Auburn Network production. good points out there we got a lot of work to do they had a good football team they ended up on the, on the long end of the scoreboard they come to our place next year but we got a long season we got four days to get ready for the next game come back to work tomorrow let's make sure we get everything together let's get out here quick get everything going let's go welcome to the Auburn football preview a little different program this week Coach Tommy Tuberville will join us, and we will look back on Monday night's game with the University of Southern California. We'll also give you some of the sights and sounds of a football team making a long trip across the West Coast to play a game and some of the things they saw and experienced there. And, of course, we will take a quick look at this Saturday's opponent, the Catamounts of Western Carolina. Stay with us. It's the Auburn Football Preview. Uh, I was, I, I was kind of excited uh, <clears throat> going into the game. I know me and some of the other freshman wide receivers were kind of nervous at the beginning, but the upper class really did a good job of just letting us know that we play, that we were going to play a major role in the ball game. So we really calmed down and we really uh, had a lot of fun at that playing. You know, once we got past the big crowd and the cameras and all that kind of stuff, we really just tried to go out there and just do what we could. <laughs> Okay, let's take you back to uh, Monday uh, afternoon in California, early evening here in uh, the good part of the country. And it was kind of hot for you, but hotter than you expected, I Well, thought. it was hot. Actually, it was cool when we first got there on Saturday, but it turned off hot the next two days, and it affected both teams. We had some guys that had a few cramps, and, uh, and uh, you know, it showed on both sides, but uh, I thought we weathered the the heat pretty well okay let's get into the game and you open uh, with the ball and caddy makes a great opening run well we were going to make a statement early in the game i wanted to defer the toss and give them the ball but they won the toss and they gave us the ball and cadillac takes the first first uh, handoff up the middle and what we call an isolation play and we made a statement pretty quick that we were going to give him the football and then uh cobb trying to uh, make the first down it's hit hard. Well, the thing I told him is, you know, he has to run the football some when he sprints out or gets into problems. He can't just try to throw the ball up for grabs, and he did a good job of that. The one thing that I was disappointed in the game about, though, was really not the interception that he threw, but the, the fumbles that he had. One that we ended up scoring on, but the other one really cost us early. And they cash uh, the turnover for the first touchdown of the game on a run by, uh, on a pass uh, by Kelly, and, and that quarterback coach. Well, when you've got a fifth-year senior quarterback that started for three years, you can do a lot of things with him early. And uh, they, they, they threw the house at us. We saw every formation, and they changed things up. And as you see on film there, they, you know, they run a bunch set, that, then they spread everybody out. And he did a good job. Heck, they were throwing the ball on third and short and fourth and short. And when you can do that, you've got a pretty good quarterback. And then Auburn, uh, on its next possession, has to punt it out, and, and Damon hit a rocket. Damon was, uh, we really need him, especially the first half. He turned the field on him several times and, and uh, really stepped up for us. And again, I, we expect that out, out of him being a fifth-year senior. All the first uh, half touchdowns came after turnovers, and here comes Auburn's big play. Uh, Carlos Dansby, who had maybe the best game of his career. Oh, yeah. Carlos Dansby made a tremendous play. And, of course, we pressured him with, with a corner blitz from Carlos Rogers. That's something we hadn't done in the past. And, you know, pressure and speed always help. And then on the very next play, Caddy takes it in, avoids the pigeons, and scores. Well, I tell you, it, what was encouraging about that field, we had another play called. And Daniel Audible got us in the right play. We blocked it right. Cadillac made a great run. Missed, made, him, made four tacklers miss and ran it in for the first touchdown of the year. Down at the uh, uh, end of the quarter, Auburn begins a, another drive and uh, gets down deep in uh, Southern Cal territory and uh, 
then we get another turnover. Yeah, I tell you, it was a great drive. We were moving the ball down the field. We had them back on their heels on defense. They were tired, and we controlled the ball game the first half. We had 17 minutes. They had 13 minutes. And this this uh, interception, we just we just threw it. And Daniel should have never thrown the ball. There were several people's fault. It wasn't just his fault because we didn't spread the guy out. We didn't cut the cut the guy that intercepted the ball. But again, the quarterback takes the takes the blame. And uh, then Southern Cal takes it in. They make a fourth down play pass on fourth and one. Well, that's what I was talking about. When you when you throw the ball on fourth and one, you've got a lot of confidence in your quarterback. And tell you, he had a had a great game. Okay, now we're down midway of the second quarter, and uh, Southern Cal looks like they might go up two, but uh, Junior Rose Green has something to do about that. Even uh, fifth-year senior quarterbacks that started for three years make mistakes, and he threw it up for grabs. And Junior made a great play. He uh, really overcame a, a bad coverage played by Carlos Rogers. And then Auburn puts together as the clock runs out. That started at 6.54 left in the second quarter, and you go 18 plays and finally get in the end game. One of the best drives that we've had in a couple years. Very encouraging. We ran the ball. We threw the ball. The guys stood up made good plays, and, and we scored the touchdown. Okay, and so it is a 14-14 game at the half. We'll be back with a, look at, a brief look at the second half. Today, we honor junior nose guard DeMarco McNeil. Against the Trojans, DeMarco recorded three tackles and had one tackle for a loss. He provided a formidable force on the inside that frustrated the Southern Cal offense throughout the game. Well, Coach, I, I know you've been a football fan all your life, and a lot of us older folks really uh, appreciated the, the fact that Keith Jackson was calling the game for ABC. He is Mr. College Football. I spent about an hour with him. I've known Mr. Jackson for, for years. and. And uh, we we passed some old times by during in the hotel, but uh, it was good to see him. And you know, he you can tell he really enjoys college football. Let's get into the second half of play, and we see that uh, the Trojans come out and put together a long drive, but you're able to stop them down within field goal range. The key to the second half, and we told our football team this was controlling the football. Whoever had the ball the longest was going to win the game because of the heat, humidity, and uh, they controlled the first drive of the second half. They. The, the whole key was they, they made some big third down conversions. We, we weren't able to get them off the field. And then Auburn comes back late in the quarter and gets it, gets it going, and you have two opportunities to score and take the lead, which would have been the, the big thing. Well, the, when you're on the road, you've got to find a way to put pressure on the other team and get them behind. We just couldn't quite do that. We had one pass play that was dropped in the end zone uh, for a touchdown, and the other... Uh, you know, our, one of our tight ends dropped it in wide open and could possibly have been a touchdown or, or closer, but it was just discouraging we weren't able to convert. On uh, Montavious, uh, it looks like he slipped down. It looked like a lot of slipping going on. Yeah, Anthony Mix slipped uh, excuse a little me, bit. Anthony yeah, Mix, he, yeah. he slipped in the end. Well, what happened? The ball was thrown behind him a little bit and he threw, threw his brakes on. You know, they only get four inches of rain in, in Los Angeles a year and the ground was hard as a rock. And, you know, when you did, your cleats went through the grass, it hit that hard pan and, and uh, they all just stay on the ground most of the night. And there were some uh, great defensive plays. Carlos Dansby made another uh, great oh, interception. Carlos Dansby made an interception. He tackled the quarterback one on one for a sack. And uh, Don Terrace Thomas, I don't know how many, made a dozen or so tackles. Uh, junior Rose Green was all over the field making plays. You know, we lost Ryder Good after the first quarter. Rashad Walker came in and played played uh, uh, a good ball game. So we, we had some some good highlights on defense, but we made, made way too many mistakes in this new defensive scheme we've got. They took advantage of, of our in inexperience. And finally, the Trojans put together the long drive and uh, finally get it down and score with uh, just a, a minute to made, made. Third, made two third down, crucial third down plays, and uh, we, we just weren't able to make tackles in open field. And again, we'd been out there the entire second half. Our offensively, we were only out there eight minutes. Our defense was out there 22 minutes the second half and uh, it just took a toll on us. So a hard fought game, travel uh, 2,000 miles to play, it's always difficult, but uh, Auburn, I gave a good account of themselves. Well, we went out to get better and play, play a good football game. Obviously, we wanted to win. Uh, we're very disappointed that we didn't come out on top, but very encouraging that we're, we, we showed signs of going to be a pretty good football team. Very physical, hard nosed, and we gave complete effort for four quarters, and that was what we were looking for. Okay, it was a hard-fought uh, loss, but there's another big game coming very soon, and we'll be back later in the program to talk about that. Long way, and I would guess one of the great positives, Coach, is that uh, you got to go to one of the great cities of America, and a lot of your guys got to fly for the first time on a very long trip. It was a long trip, and 
fortunately we've got ours out of the way now. They have to come here next year, but uh, as you can see over the video that we'll watch, we, we do everything first class. Yeah. Our guys, they have a good time. We take care of them because they put so much time and effort into this. And, and uh, we went out a day early, uh, two days early. I normally just go out a day early and, and uh, you know, we, we travel by plane for the first time for some of the guys. We've got them, I don't know how many times we loaded and unloaded buses in the two-day period. Yeah. Uh, you know, the meals were outstanding. We were staying in a great hotel. Yeah. Had a lot of fans with us. I'm proud of our fans. You know, they travel with us. That's they right. said we had 12 to 15,000. Uh, USC fans were in shock. You know, they yeah. don't see that many yeah. fans. Yeah. They don't come to a game unless they're playing UCLA. And it was just a great following and a lot of loyalty. And, and uh, it was a fun trip. We didn't do anything fun for the players because they, obviously, we do meetings and all those things. But uh, uh, one thing we, we try to do is get them off their feet as much as we could, show them the stadium, watch a lot of film, be prepared to play. And our guys were, they were excited and had a lot of intensity. I don't know if a, a lot of the players appreciate the, uh, the history of the Los Angeles Coliseum, but I certainly did. Kennedy made his uh, ask not speech there, you know, during the National Convention. And there have been Super Bowls and World Series even. The Dodgers played a World Series. Yeah. Evil Knievel, you know, yeah. jumped about 20 cars. Yeah. It's a... Uh, a lot of history there, but uh, you know, we're part of it now. Obviously, you know, we didn't we didn't win the game, but I'm proud of the team and our fans. And this entire trip was long, hard fought. Now we're going to, have to try to get over it, regroup, and uh, get ready for the next game. It's a long season. Okay, we'll be back in just a minute. Defense the blitz a lot. They seen that we had trouble picking up the blitz most of the time. So I expected the blitz, but I I, I expected of us we should pick up the blitz and just throw the ball, get our timing down. We should be pretty good. They basically, I guess, like Louisiana Tech, uh, they're gonna get a lot of snaps on offense, but we just gotta minimize the, you know, they run after the catch, and so we just gotta do a great job tackling. talk about uh, this week's upcoming game one last look back at Los Angeles and that Tiger Walk coach that was something it was outstanding you know we turned the corner and there were three or four five thousand people in Tiger Walk and I saw the Tiger Walk signs but it brought back old memories of our late friend Tommy Williams who was our Tiger Walk director for years yeah and you know memories went back in my head you know even though we've got that big game of how much we missed Tommy and how much many great things he did for Auburn and especially how important he was to Tiger Walk and uh, uh, you know, it was just a sad, sad few moments there as we, we thought about that situation. You're right. You're right. He will be missed for many, many years. The Catamounts of Western Carolina. You've got a uh, very short turnaround for this game. This is a one double A team uh, that plays in a very good conference. They'll be, they'll be worthy. Coming off a win, uh, they won their first game 23 to three. They run a very unusual offense. Uh, they, they don't huddle at all. They spread the field. Uh, they'll basically wake you line up to call your defense and they'll signal the quarterback in what to run and off they go. So offensively or defensively for us, it'll be a be an interesting game to, to prepare for. Then on defense, uh, that they play a lot like we do. So there's some carryover. So offensively, the thing we just need to do is regroup, uh, correct our mistakes and and uh, get better. And I think that this is a game where we uh, need to understand that we've got to continue to improve. Uh, we've got to forget what happened last week. Whether you win or lose the last game, you got to forget about it and go on. You got to improve. And I'm looking forward to coming back to Jordan Hare Stadium, friendly confines, and being able to to play a game in, in front of people that really enjoy football. So, is the approach more so to get your team ready to play, that is physically and, and mentally and so forth, rather than so much effort, uh, emphasis on schemes in that time? Well, yeah, there's there's not a lot scheme wise you can do in a short short period of time. We've we'd already put together a game plan going on what they. Had, we had projected them to do. Now they've changed some things, so we'll make some adjustments, but but our game plan will be basically from what we've already talked about before this week started. We'll um, tweak it just a little bit, but the thing we want to do is just go out and try to uh, do things better than what we did out in California and try to improve each week. So it's a bounce-back week uh, for the Tigers, 
and it is a four o'clock start uh, Saturday afternoon. It is a pay-per-view game, so if you haven't uh, gotten uh, fixed up for the pay-per-view, you can call your cable operator or your dish operator and get set for a four o'clock kickoff from Jordan Hare. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. See you. The following is an Auburn Network production. All right, let's stop real quick. Great ball game. Made a lot of improvements. Preseason's over. First conference game next week. We go back to work. Get some rest tonight. I know everybody in here is tired. It's been a long week. It's going to be a long, t long week this week because we got to get better. We're going to practice. We're going to practice hard. We're going to get ready for Vandy, and we're going to play well. It's good everybody got to play. Everybody got their uh, little time in. Now it's time to go to work. All right, Lorenzo Diamond. Lead us in, uh, lead us in our song, War Eagle. <laughs> Western Carolina by a score of 56 to nothing. Coach, if you dreamed this one, you couldn't have planned it better. Great day of football on the plains. Uh, we needed a win like this. You know, it was a win where we knew we had to go out and play hard, but uh, the, the thing that you worry about games like this is being sloppy when the, when the game gets, gets in control. And our players played for four quarters and played hard. We made improvement and we played everybody on the bench and uh, it was a successful day. Another positive of this is you'll have the opportunity to look at a lot of players because you played practically everybody on the bench. Well, we really did. You know, we held out four or five starters. Yeah, ben Allen didn't play, Reggie Torbor, Jay Ratliff, Don Terrace Thomas, and they were beat up from the game Monday night, so we needed to get these guys fully healthy, getting ready to go into the conference play next week against Vanderbilt, and, and it worked out great for us. But again, it all goes back to playing offense. No matter who you're playing, you have to execute, you have to go through your reads, you have to do things in the proper manner, and you have to play it with enthusiasm and with a very aggressive attitude, and that's what we did today, and we got better. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, Auburn had an opportunity to play both their quarterbacks, and uh, we'll talk to those two and several others right now in the dressing room. It, it just, you know, all around, we ran the ball nice and, and made some nice conversions there, so it felt good to get in the end zone. I feel pretty good getting to get you know, more experience and uh feel good, you know, I just out there trying to have fun and you know, my teammates came out and everyone is enjoying themselves. Really, this game we were trying to focus on what we had to do really. Uh last week we came in, we knew we had made a lot of mistakes. So all week of practice, that's how our coach had been talking about was try to limit the mistakes that we made and just try to come out and try not to shoot ourselves in the foot too much and uh just get ready for next week's game. The trip from uh, L.A., it kind of wore us out. We just come out this week and worked and worked hard for them. We didn't want to come out and take them lightly because uh, teams like that just come out and they come out to win. They ain't got nothing to lose. And we didn't want to come out and uh, play like we did last year against La Tech. We want to come out and prove a point this year and uh, just come back this week and get ready for SEC play. You know, it felt good to be back in front of the home crowd because, you know, I really ain't really got a chance to perform in front of the home crowd. So it felt great. We played together today, man. We came around, we played smart, and we played hard today. Um, last game, last week, we played hard, but we didn't play smart enough. Um, but this week, we came together, and we um, game plan, and everything worked out the way we wanted. Jim, just a little while ago, over 80,000 fans were here, and a lot of competition today, Coach. So uh, a lot of loyalty shown for this Auburn team. Well, this... These Auburn fans, uh, they amazed me. Last week in California, we had 12, 14, 15,000. This week, uh, great turnout for our first home game. And, uh, you know, it's fun to come here and play in Jordan Hare because the excitement, the enthusiasm, the attitude of our fans is just outstanding. The Tigers waste no time in getting down the field. Well, let's take a look at the first half of the play. Tigers coming out of the tunnel for the first time this year. Felt good, Coach. Beautiful hot day, and uh, here's a first tackle made by Dexter Murphy. His first start is an Auburn Tiger. Red Edmonds on it. Red Edmonds on, on the, the other side. side. Exactly right. And uh, had some young guys playing for the first time. A lot of young guys, and a lot of enthusiasm. We made them punt after one first down, and Roger could. Uh, Takes his first punt of the day return and had a great day return. But to look at the block and uh, Tavares Robinson, uh, 
Uh, Travis Williams, good blocking downfield. He averaged 14 yards a return on seven of them. Here comes our first play. We run a reverse to uh, Montavious Pitts from Lochapoca. First carries an Auburn Tiger, and he makes the best of it. Had to make somebody miss. We're going to see a replay here. Uh, we miss a block right here, but he makes the first guy miss, which is always important on a reverse. Any, any kind of end around, and uh, you can see his great speed, and he's going to be an outstanding athlete. Quarterback got a block there, too. Though. Yeah, quarterback did block. <laughs> Here comes a third and nine at the 41. We made a lot of third down conversions, and that was key. We didn't make a lot last week. But uh, here's uh, Trey Smith coming around uh, left in his first carries an Auburn Tiger. Other than one kickoff last week, he's going to have a good career for us. And now the third and nine. Here's Daniel throwing it downfield to Marcel Willis. Marcel was missing last year. He you know, had an ankle injury all last year, and now he's healthy, and he's going to be a big part of this, this season. Here we come and give the ball to Cadillac and uh, look at that inside move, sets them all up, gets it to the outside and tight ropes it down the sideline. It was good to see him back 100% healthy. He was uh, hurting still a little bit last week from an ankle in, uh, in the Southern Cow game, but uh, I, th I think carrying the corner by Johnson. Yeah, yeah I, I think carrying the ball just a few times is really going to get him healthy going down the stretch here in the SEC. Four carries on the day, 67 yards, 16.8 per carry. Pretty good average. Good average and good offensive line blocking. And, you know, we played a new offensive line, Monrico Crittington at right guard, uh, Taylor Bourgeois at right tackle, Troy Reddick, a true freshman at uh, left guard. So uh, it was a new lineup. Here we come back on defense, uh, Carlos Dansby and Roger Hood on the tackle. Good speed. Here we're back on offense, running After the boot. a good return. That's right, a good return, good boot. There's a good job of getting away from the first tackler, and this is what we're looking for from uh, Robert Johnson. Catching the ball, getting, getting his shoulder square, getting downfield, and having, having a lot of enthusiasm. Miss a field goal on this drive. Yeah, a little disappointed in that, but Damon will get it going. Here's a quick screen. Uh, cause a fumble here. Goes back behind the line of scrimmage and it's fourth down and uh, they turn the ball back over to us on a punt. It doesn't take you long to score here. Here's the ball at the 42. 42, uh, just inside handoff to uh, Carnell. Uh, easy touchdown, 42 yards, and that's all a Cadillac for this day. You've seen enough, huh? Seen enough. We're going to get him healthy, get him ready to go for this stretch run. Okay, going another way with uh, the Catamounts. They're at the 28-yard line. Got a different... Uh, run here good good sack by Tommy Jackson from Opelika, Opelika High School and Spencer Johnson but uh, you know we've had a little different lineup with uh, Mayo Sile moved him to defensive end he did a good job for us gives us a Kevin Green on the outside so to speak for pass rush here's a good fake uh, throw down the field to Anthony Mix another true freshman uh, we played a lot of young guys I tell you it's, it's amazing to look up and see how many different players we have out there Ronnie Brown inside run good block downfield by Danny Lindsay and, and uh, Ryan Broom. Here comes a touchdown. Give it to him at the seven-yard line. Watch the blocks inside on this play. Well, look how we move the pile. Everybody gets knocked back. And look at Danny Lindsay, Troy Reddick, Monrico Crittington, Taylor Bourgeois, Mark Perra. Watch the block of Mark Perra right there turning this guy from the inside outside. Good run by Ronnie Brown. Seven carries for 43 yards and a touchdown for Ronnie. Also a good block here by Jake Slaughter. The first time he'd played... Uh, very much for, for, for the Auburn Tigers, but he's going he's gonna to be a good fullback for us. They are so old pressuring there. Good throw and catch. D. Durham on his first tackle as an Auburn Tiger, and here's good pressure down the field. Make him throw a quick pass, and Mark Brown had another good game for us. Okay, we're in the second quarter now. Second. This is their best drive uh, of the day. Well, this is uh, uh, DeMarco McNeil on his first inter uh, second interception as an Auburn Tiger, and here they come again on offense. And, Ontarius Williams makes a tackle on a, on his first start as, a, as an Auburn Tiger taking over for Don Terrace Williams. Here's Roderick Hood on one of his returns. And the thing about Roderick, he'll get it north and south, and uh, that's what we're looking for on punt returns. Good blocking. Eddie Grand did a good job with his special teams group on, on this day. 30 yards on that return. Here's a boot uh, throw downfield to uh, Cooper Wallace. Another, another uh, freshman play in force. His first touchdown. A lot of firsts in this game for a lot of Auburn Tigers. A lot right? of new faces, a lot, a lot of new, new numbers. Faces. I congratulate you on remembering all of them. Well, it's a, uh, we've had a lot of time to work with them. Here's another true freshman, uh, Ben Grubbs, on his first tackle from an electric high school here in Alabama. Here's Trey Smith up the middle again. 
uh, with Taylor Bourgeois with a good block. Troy Reddick, a true freshman at left guard, making a good block. Drive stalls, That's, they're going the other way. Oh, me, Georgia. Here's uh, a quick throw, a fourth, uh, getting ready for a fourth down play. Good pressure for Carlos Dansby. It was fourth down, and they don't have enough to, to make the play. Now we're going to two minute offense, and it's good we get to work on this with, with our offense, and we do a good job. Here we scramble, good protection. Jason Campbell and what he does best is scramble down the field and get an extra positive yards. We go no huddle here. Uh, and out of the shotgun, throwing it to Ronnie Brown down the sideline. Got to make one guy miss. Good block in there downfield by Devin Aruma Shadu. And uh, we're moving the ball down. Get it in field goal range, but miss it. And it's 28-0 uh, at the half. I just want you to know that I started at age 15. Well, you, at least 15, but you had to seen a lot of a lot of exciting moments here at Auburn. I did. I've seen a lot. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna write a book one of these days. Good. And here's a, a feature we have for you uh, this year that highlights some of the great Auburn players of the past who have represented Auburn University so well since they've gone on to uh, make their fame and fortune in the pros. We begin with Edmund Nelson. Edmund Nelson was a defensive tackle on Coach Pat Dyke's first team at Auburn. Today, he looks back on his days on the Plains with fond memories. I find, though, that the longer I've been uh, out of the game, the better I was. Yeah. So that, you know, <laughs> the better everybody else was. Man, you were the greatest thing. Since, you know, so we're, it's a lot of fun, though, seeing the guys. And I still have some contact with them through the NFL. So it's, it's a lot of fun seeing these guys and seeing what made this program what it was. Edmund went on to a long NFL career with the Pittsburgh Steelers and now is a successful insurance agent in the Pittsburgh area. But he still maintains strong ties with Auburn. Well, I remember when they, they took a picture, I think it was uh, made into a football card, of me standing on top of that building over there. And they had the stadium in the background. And the only thing on the stadium was the normal stadium the way it was, the one level. And then they had the pylons ready for the first uh, upper deck. Uh -huh. And now I come back and I look at it and I'm like, you know, Auburn did all right. You know, <laughs> we did all right. And uh, the program is, uh, has always been a great SEC program, a great national program. And it, it kind of died off there for a little bit. And now they're, they're starting to surface. And the reason why some of us old guys are here today is to try to, you know, get maybe some type of mentoring thing together with some of the current players to make sure that they understand, hey, man, this is where we were. And these are the guys that brought you to where you are. So be appreciative of where you are and make the best out of every instant that you're on that field over there. And uh, I think with the, uh, with the guys coming back the way they are, I think it's going to make a big difference. Oh, yeah. The junior from Hoover was the team's leading rusher with 91 yards on 12 carries. He was also one of four Auburn tailbacks to score a touchdown. Chris Butler, this week's Toyota Tiger of the game. We are, as they say, in the friendly confines of Jordan Hare Stadium, and uh, a nice night, kind of warm today, but it, it feels real good now, Coach. It really does, and I was afraid it was going to be real hot, but cool weather set in at about 4 o'clock. We had a nice breeze today. You came out and did exactly what you wanted to do to open a half. Well, we're, we were hit 28 nothing and a half, and I told them that we were going to practice very hard on Sunday if we went out and made a mess of it the second half. The, 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 the thing that you want to do is finish off a game like that play a lot of players but look like a good football team and carry the, that momentum into the next week. You don't want to start screaming and hollering on the sideline and get everybody frustrated, but I tell you, it was a great four quarters of football. A lot of players played, and it was exciting to see those young guys make plays. Long opening drive to open the second half of play, and let's take a look at it. Going to go 16 plays on this drive, Coach. Well, we wanted to dominate the line of scrimmage. There's a good block by Mark Perra. We started most of the first team offense. We needed to get some confidence. And Troy Reddick there, you can see another true freshman. He's going to be tough to get out of the lineup after I've seen him play. Here's Anthony Mix. He's going to be a big part of what we're going to do the next few weeks. Uh, he's a big receiver. But it was good to see some consistency. Over the past couple of years, we've had a had teams uh, beat like this in the first half, but we went out and didn't look very good the second half. These are all third down plays. Four third down plays in this drive. Com well, it, converted. well, it's good to see us convert. And Daniel Cobb putting the ball on the money. Uh, again, good patience and poise in the pocket. This is a great catch from uh, Robert Johnson here on this third down catch. And uh, again, the, the offensive line protection was good. Here's a good fake. Third and seven here. Throwing the ball down the field to Lorenzo Diamond. 
uh, All right. senior, one of the few seniors we have on the team, and and uh, he's got some. He's done a good job with senior leadership uh, through the, these tough, hot tour days. There's a lot of uh, young faces on, on defense. We didn't come back with our starting defense. We mixed a lot of freshmen in, but uh, we stopped them, and here we come back with uh, Trey Smith with good blocking. That was good. That's an option play there by, by Jason Campbell. Here's good protection again. Uh, Jake Slaughter on the reception. Good hard, hard nose running after he catches the ball. And then we come back, and uh, Jason scrambles around for one of his first rushing touchdowns. Good block by Trey Smith. And again, it's good to see some positive uh, yards out of, out of Jason Campbell. Good experience for him. It was a good positive day for him. It was, you know, he did a lot of good things, Coach. He did a lot of good things and gives, gives him a chance to possibly get in the game some. Here the, they run what we call Emory and Henry, spread the field out and throw the ball. But uh, <laughs> Emory and Henry. Emory and Henry, yeah. That was one of Steve Spurrier's old, old uh, <laughs> formations. And uh, we were prepared for it. And Rashad Walker, one of our other few seniors on the team, Drops a sure interception. It would have been good to see him get that one. Third and ten here. Good screen pass. And Taurus Williams and Dante Booker on the tackle with Mayo Sewell coming over the top. Now here we come back running a toss sweep to Chris Butler. Had a good day. Fourth tailback of the day. Gets hit a little late here in just a few minutes. There it is. Oh. And, and if we come back and run the ISO up the middle. And uh, it's good to see those big holes by the offensive line. He ended up being the uh, leading ground gainer coach with uh, 93 yards. Well, Chris has got a lot of speed. He's, he's going to have to be a uh, positive factor for us because, you know, Cornell's not going to be able to carry it ever down. Uh, here we go with a couple of third and fourth down stops. Uh, very key to us controlling line of scrimmage is Tommy Jackson from Opelika. You know, we had Tommy Jackson, Lamarcus Rowell, and Will Herring in the game at the same time. All three from Opelika High School. It's good to see that. Here's a here's Ontarius Williams coming up, number 31 on the big third down charge. And this fourth down here, they run the ball. We cause a fumble, knock the ball out. Red Eddins on the on the cause fumble, and uh, a bunch of Auburn Tigers swarming around trying to find the ball, and we we get the turnover. I know one proud popper, Red Eddins dead. Well, here we come back on offense for the I think the last touchdown. Jason Campbell scrambling around. They blitzed us a lot. Devin Aruma should do on one of his few catches of the day. Uh, here's play action. Good block in there by uh, Ryan Broom. Jason scrambling around. Good throw on the run to uh, who was that tight end? Cooper Wallace. Cooper Wallace, yeah. Couldn't see the numbers there. Cooper Wallace, number eight. There you can see Jason throwing better on the run all the time. and Good catch by Cooper. And, you can just see that confidence coming. Yeah, we're, we're getting better. We're getting more confidence. There's Marshall Thornton. Uh, good block on the outside. Trey Smith on his first touchdown. <laughs> and no one touched him. Good blocking inside. Good blocking down, downfield by Cooper Wallace. 56 nothing. Auburn. Ask any coach and he'll tell you the best players... out a positive win and didn't have to use your frontline people so much. We had a chance to rest a lot of starters. We had an opportunity to play a lot of players. Now tomorrow we get a chance to look at the film and, and be able to evaluate some guys that maybe not would get in the games unless we get to look at them. Last year, remember Carnell Williams, we didn't have an opportunity to play him a lot because the games were so close and we didn't really know what we had. Today we looked at Trey Smith, Chris Butler, Troy Reddick, an offensive line. So it was uh, good to play all those young players. Okay, you're going into the SEC. That's that's different. Well, it's football time now. We preseason's over. Uh, to have a chance to win the conference, you you have to come out of the blocks and play well. And we're coming off some pretty good momentum. Vanderbilt will come in. It's going to be an 11:30 game. It's going to be hot. Uh, it will be Bobby Johnson's uh, first game as head coach at Vanderbilt in a conference game. I'm sure he'll be excited. Vanderbilt always plays hard, plays tough. So. Uh, We'll go back to work. We'll try to improve this week in practice, and hopefully we play like we did today. Good luck. Thank you. Well, that's our program for this week. We'll remind you that the Auburn Network is on the air at 9.30 a.m. Saturday, so you tune us in and uh, enjoy the radio broadcast. We'll see you next Sunday for the Auburn Football Review. Auburn Network production. Cutler calling his play on third and ten. Cutler off the play fake. Looking, looking. 
is hit from behind, coughed up the football. It's loose and still loose. Vanderbilt going for it. Auburn picks it up. It's a 10. Spencer Johnson. He's going to go in for a touchdown. Touchdown, Auburn! Nothing like winning an SEC game, guys. They're hard to win. Great job. Great job. Yeah. Now, we didn't play our best game. We played like the rain and, you know, kind of like we kind of drug around a little bit. We made enough plays to win. That's what, that's what all counts in the end. But we got to continue to get better. Hey, we got a short turnaround. In five days, we play another game. A team that's going to be raring to go. So we've got to get better. You guys have hurt. So make sure you take care of it. We've got to have you out there tomorrow. We'll have a great game plan. National TV come Thursday night. We're going to turn it loose. But great job. We'll get your heads up. You guys that, that, that made mistakes, that's going to happen. But you got to correct them. you got to work to get better. All right, good job. Good. Welcome. We're in the Tiger Den where our recruits each week are welcomed here at Auburn. Uh, Coach, you get eight shots in the conference and uh, a 31 to six win over Vanderbilt is a nice way to begin. It's a great start, and it, to win in the SEC is very difficult. And and uh, this first one for us was a home game, and you have to win your home games in the SEC to have a chance to go back to Atlanta. So we were very fortunate that we won this first one. And this is one of those games where the defense really helped you and and scored some points. On a, on a wet day, you want to play well on defense, and you want to score some points on defense because the wet weather gives you a chance. And I thought we pressured the quarterback. We turned, they turned the ball over twice, and we recovered both of them for touchdowns. And uh, you know, when your offense needs some help, you know, defense can shine, and it did today. Okay, let's go to the dressing room and talk to some of those players. It felt good out there. I think it kind of carried over from the week before, coming out and seeing the fronts, uh, defensive fronts that they were giving us along with the coverage, and then just applying our scheme to it and do it, you know, basically what we've been coached to do. It's still room for improvement, technique, uh, even in some decision making. You know, there were a couple of bad decisions I had out there. So we're always looking to get better, but we were happy to get a win today with the SEC game. At first, we started off pretty good, you know, the first drive and everything. We, uh, they really didn't stop us, but we we hurt ourselves on most of them drives. So we just going to practice we get better. Yeah, that's a big day for the defense. The coach been talking about we need to score some points. And, you know, we just went out there today. Everybody stayed aggressive. We had let down that time, but overall, we all we all just hung together and we just stuck, in, stuck into it to the end. Welcome back to the Tiger Den. We're right after Auburn's 31-6 win over Vanderbilt. And, Coach, uh, Tiger Walk special today. You had... Uh, Bob Harris and uh, Wynn Lyle, great uh, former Auburn players, and Wesley Person, a great uh, NBA player. Yeah. You know, it's great to see all those uh, former athletes, players, you know, people that donate money to go through Tiger Walk because it's so special. It's a big tradition here at Auburn, and uh, you can see the smile on their face when they walk down through there. It's, it's, it's a great time, and it's great to be able to share that with people from the past. All right, let's get into the first half of play and get to see a real thunderstorm roll through. Coach, uh, Tiger ad-libbed a little bit on Joe Shellnut yesterday. Had to be the weather. Uh, <laughs> landed in the wrong spot. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all about organization and planning, and sometimes it doesn't go right. That goes to show you these birds have a mind of their own. Okay. Maybe Tiger knew the weather was going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the start of SEC play for year 2002, and I tell you, our guys were fired up. Uh, a little concerned about our kickoff uh, returns. We're, we hadn't had a lot of them, and we need more practice, but uh, we've got to get a little bit better field position with kickoff returns. Roger Hood does a good job here running and getting up the middle with it. He's got a really good average per return. Yeah, we're getting better. Here's a, our first play, and what we want to do is go after their corners real quick. They played soft. We want to take advantage of that, and, uh, you know, we just fake it to Carnell and throw a quick slant to Marcel Willis, and uh, Marcel had a great day for us. Boy, with... Uh with Cadillac back there, that play fake, it really works good. Uh, it really does. And, you know, we're going to have to keep running play action passes. And you can look at, look at Carnell's legs. That's what sets him apart from other backs is just legs are like pistons. They never stop. And good block in there at the point of attack by our offensive line. This is a, this is a big third down play here. Third, great throw and catch. We didn't block the, the blitz right. And uh, Daniel got pressure, but he stood in there, made the throw. And that's a hard throw, throwing a, a little, little quick out with a pretty good coverage by Vanderbilt. 
Now, some teams would uh, have trouble overcoming a, a seven-play drive, and then and then you get a field goal block. Yeah, we're soft uh, right there with their wing, and they got great penetration. That's one thing we did correct, and they tried the same block the rest of the game, and we blocked it real well. But again, that shows you have to, you have to have concentration on everything. Mayo Sal on the first play. Uh, He's got a slant inside and good play by Mayo in the defense. Here comes the rain and here comes Dansby. Dansby, uh, I tell you, you know, he, he gets better and better. The thing that Carlos does is he plays with reckless abandon. And there you can tell uh, what, when the defense scores, it's really exciting. <laughs> and you know, Coach, the crowd sensed that there was a, an opportunity here because it was raining and the ball was wet. <laughs> That's exactly right. You know, the good Lord looked down on us. We, we had... Uh, we had rain when they had the ball, and it didn't rain when we had it. So uh, uh, I guess that's home field advantage. <laughs> I guess that's what that is. Carlos Dansby, the big play man for Auburn so far this year. We uh, got good pressure here. We come back with Carnell, and and uh, you know they were everybody's key to stop Carnell. They had eight nine in the box and forces you to throw the football, and that's what we've got to continue to do is throw it some on first down, run play actions, and but again you just have to every once in a while just bite your lip and say, hey, we're going to have to block all nine of them. And here we, we, we do it. And Carnell uh, makes another good run. He is a tough young man. Well, see, there's two guys we didn't block. Carnell still gets five yards. And, uh, uh, that's Ronnie Brown there on one of his carries. But again, it's just one of those things we have to be able to run the ball against nine-man front. Of the third down play, there's five and third, six. That's right, third down to Marcel Willis. And again, their corners played soft, and that gives you the opportunity to throw those quick hitches. And, Here's Carnell on the outside with a good, good downfield blocking on a great run. There's Mark Perra and Marcel on blocking downfield. We worked a lot on that this week. We know Mar uh, Carnell's going to break some, so we have to be able to block downfield to get that extra 10, 15, 20 yards. Good. You can see the change of direction here and the good block. And the breaking of tackles. And there's Mark Perra coming downfield from his weak tackle spot making that block. So the Tigers go up 14-0 in the first overcome the uh, opening, the bad play opening uh, the game, and uh, back on schedule. Coach, right. here they come. Uh, they changed during midweek. They decided to run more midline option. It gave us a little bit of a problem. Uh, when they didn't run the option, they didn't get a lot, but uh, they had a good game plan of basically freezing the ball. Here's a little screen pass that they throw, and uh, they didn't make it. They uh, kick a field goal. To make, yeah, made it fourth down and kicked the field goal. Here we come back, and uh, got a good throw to Marcel Willis. And Daniel Cobb's getting better and better, more confident. You know, this is a drive that we needed. Uh, here's Carnell breaking it outside, breaking tackles. 14 there's, yards on this run. Their secondary's having to make a lot of plays. Here's a quick slant. Again, uh, on for to third down. Marcel on third down. Here's Ronnie Brown. And, you know, again, it's a great run. We're breaking tackles, but we do not fumble the football at Auburn. Running backs and quarterbacks do not fumble the ball, and we turn it over. And that was a knockout blow. And it gave them life, and they have a long drive here of uh, just controlling the football. It you know, wasn't a lot of intentions of scoring quickly. They just want to run a lot of time. Their defense was getting tired. And it kept them in the game, Coach. Kept them in the game. Here's, here's a play that, uh, that really concerned us. A little play action off the option. And, and uh, Tavoris Robinson made a great play. And Horace Willis, with his first start as, the, as an Auburn Tiger, played well. But uh, defensively kept us kept us going. Here they come back, and uh, that was a big third down play. And, uh, and uh, they converted. So uh, it was one of those games we just couldn't get the ball back enough to get the knockout blow the first half. Auburn was three and out and so this is the drive just before the half where they uh, kicked the field goal. Yeah, long drive, kept our offense off the field and we played well enough on defense to kick them out, keep them out of the end zone. Here's a big play right here on third down. Force Willis coming all the way across on uh, their, their good uh, wide receiver Stricker and defensively we, we stood stood the challenge and they kicked the three points and uh, Again, we've done quite a few, few without touchdowns. The Tiger Den uh, recruits are able to see the great Auburn players who've gone on to fame and fortune in the NFL. And uh, Coach, one of the best of the bunch was Kevin Green, who didn't have a great career here until his senior year, and then he blossomed into a great pro player. You know, Joe Witt, who coached Kevin Green, tells me some great stories about how he came in and worked out and built his body up, made himself a football player. It goes to show you, you, if you put your mind to it, you can achieve about anything you want to if you have the desire and determination. And Kevin Green's been a big part of our program since I've been here, spiritually and mentally. He's helped our players. Uh, he's worked with them, and uh, it's great to have him part of the Auburn family. Kevin Green was not the most recognized member of the Auburn defense in the early 1980s. 
But in this highlight film, you can see an early version of the All-Pro Kevin Green that terrorized NFL quarterbacks for more than a decade. Defensive end Kevin Green, a walk-on in 1980, who once considered himself too small to play, broke the team record for sacks in a season, setting a standard for desire that future Auburn players will aspire to. What I went through, utterly Pat died, you know, for two years here, lasted me for 15 years in the NFL. <laughs> I mean, this, what I went through here, okay, set the pace and everything I went through in the NFL uh, seemed like it was secondary and it never lived up to what I experienced here and I think that's why I was able to last so long. This future Hall of Famer played in the NFL for 15 years and was an all-pro performer for the Los Angeles Rams, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Carolina Panthers. Tiger of the game is junior linebacker Carlos Dansby. In the first quarter, Dansby caused a fumble and returned it seven yards for an Auburn touchdown. That was the first score by an Auburn defensive player since the 1999 season. Carlos Dansby, this week's Toyota Tiger of the game. 14-6 to six game as we get into the second half. When you're on defense first, you need to stop. Well, we do, and we gave up some rushing yards the first half of the option. I thought our coaches did a good job of adjusting the second half, but defending the option is tough, and... Uh, you know, it's going to be good for us down the road, but I was proud of the team, the way we shut them down beginning of the second half. Kicking off to start the uh, third quarter of play. They like to come out of the end zone with it, Coach. Yeah, they do. And uh, you know what concerned me here is we hadn't been on offense, it seemed like, in an hour because of the halftime and that long drive. And now they get the ball back defensively. We had to make a big play. And uh, here they run the little inside trap. You know, they were just going to consume the clock and keep our offense off the field because they felt the game slipping away from them. And I was proud defensively. We did put pressure on them. Here's a little screen pass that they throw. A junior Rose Green on the tackle. The Spencer Johnson coming from the defensive line position out to make a tackle on the screen pass. Good pressure by our front. Uh, they needed 12 and held them to 7. That's right. They had to give it up there. Now we get the ball and we start hammering it down the middle. Good uh, Good surge by the offensive line. Look at that one again. You know, Marsh, uh, uh, we had uh, several offensive linemen that played real good football games on the run, I and mean, that's what we're going to have to continue to have. Here's a third and seven. Third and seven, great, great throw and catch. Oh, man. You that know, was... those people that don't like Daniel Cobb need to watch a few of these <laughs> right. plays. Yeah. I mean, he's look, he's got people in his face, continue to throw the ball to the right person down the field, and that's a quarterback that's gaining confidence, a guy that's really knowing what to do with the football, not just not just throwing the ball, but reading the defense and throwing it to the right person. Touch, too, Coach, over those defenders there. Right. Good touch, and, uh, again, he's he's a guy that's getting a lot of confidence. Uh, good to see Robert Johnson catch a, catch a ball there. He's going to have to continue to stay strong with that. Here's our field goal that basically put the game out of reach 11 points, and uh, it was one of those that was much needed. We'd, we'll take a touchdown on that, but the field goal was just as important. Late in the quarter now. Here's a great defensive play of Carlos Rudd. They call pass interference on that from a guy that really couldn't see the play from behind. But uh, uh, you have to play what they call. And uh, again, we, we'll, we're going to continue to play aggressive with our defensive backs. Here's another one. Uh, we, that's a, that's a uh, pressure interception. We pressure him, throw the ball deep, and Roger Hood catches it. We got a, we got a call there holding which brought the ball back about 50 yards, but we'll take the turnover. And, and it doesn't take you long to get in the end zone. Just a two-play drive coming here. Watch these two excellent plays. Well, we quick slant uh, uh, that forces them to get nine out of the box. Now they go in and play straight defense, and this is what happens when people play straight defense. We get good blocks. You have to make one guy miss, which we did on 13, and it's all the way to the house. It looks like the second play of the game that we scored against him in Vanderbilt last year. He made the guy miss on the same play. Good block in by the front and big touchdown there to get the game out of hand. I just love to watch this guy run because when he sees a hole or he sees the goal line, there's no looking to cut back or anything. Well, He's headed for the goal line. Here's a replay. Watch him make 13 miss. And, uh, you know, he makes such long strides. He doesn't look like he's covering a lot of ground, but you don't see a lot of people catching him from behind. And that's a great run by Carnell. But, good, again, it starts at the offensive line of scrimmage. 170 yards for the Cadillac yesterday on 20 carries. Here's the option play, which we started to uh, uh, play a lot better as the game went on. And it's good practice for our defense. It's called a counter option. See him fake it. 28 stutter step and go the other way. Dexter Murphy played both the pitch and the quarterback. Uh, Tommy Jackson there from Opelika High School coming from pressure from the backside. And that's what we needed. We didn't have that from the first half. 
We run a quarterback draw on third and five. Quarterback draw, Mayo Sal, uh, some of the other guys on the play. Again, they're just kind of running the clock out. And we're just we're playing, playing not soft, but we're not going to give them the big play. Auburn's third and out, and Duvall is punting. There's a good, great play by Lamel Ages on one of our gunners on our punt team. Uh, big punt, no return. Vanderbilt 34-yard line. Cutler, the uh, young quarterback, taking a pretty good beating in this game. Coach. Well, here's a play you see that uh, caused another, another uh, uh, big play. Jay Ralla, you know, scrambles up. It's a, he had a guy open, but the contact right as he threw the football by Jay Ratliff caused an incomplete. Now watch this one. This is the big play. This is a big play, and th this is what happens when you play aggressive defense. Our defensive guys are getting a lot more confidence. Play action pass. Watch Mayo style at the top. Bam. Knocks the ball loose. Ball bounces around. The big key here is you bend your knees when you pick this thing. Watch him bend his knees. You know, that's one little thing that we work on. Spencer Johnson with... Don Dunn and Terry Price, they work on bending their knees when you pick up a fumble, not just turning, bending your back, and that's an important point for all high school players when you, when you pick up a fumble. Watch right here. You know, when you, you got an opportunity to score, concentrate, uh, knock the ball out first, and then Spencer Johnson comes by and bends his knees as he picks the ball up. See, that young man right there didn't concentrate. Of course, he had some people hanging on him. But watch this. He bends his knees, he picks the ball up, and he scores, and Two touchdowns by the defense really was the was the call of the day. This is a, <laughs> a weird season. You're playing on Monday, and now you're playing on Thursday, and you're playing days and nights. What are you going to do this week? Well, this is the last game of our 18-day stretch. We have four games in a very quick period of time. We have to make sure we get everybody healthy. And by Thursday, it's going to be a tough game, our second conference game, our first one on the road. It's going to be very important that we get everybody back healthy and prepared, ready to go. It'll be a tough football game. You talk about depth uh, and, and how important it is in SEC football because it's such tough play, and the depth factor is already uh, uh, on your mind. Well, it is, and it's been a factor. We, I think we were able to, to win these last two ball games after the USC game because we had more depth. We were able to play players that were, were second-team players, but they stepped up and played like first-team players, and that's going to be the key to our season. If we keep enough people healthy, to where we can have good depth and our backups can continue to get that experience, we're going to have a pretty good chance to be a good team. Okay, Thursday night, uh, national telecast. It's Auburn and Mississippi State. Game time is 6.45. The Auburn Network will be on the air at 4.45. We'll see you next week here. This has been the Auburn Football Review. Here's Cobb, looking, throwing, passes caught inside the 10 to the 5, still on his feet. He's in! That's Marcel Willis. Touchdown, Auburn! short we're gonna get out of here i told you we're gonna get five how many did we get yeah! 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 <laughs> because of those six we're gonna take saturday off yeah! Watching the film at 2.30. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the toughest team won the game. The most physical team won the game. The team that concentrated the most, didn't lose their poise, played hard, and you got better as time went on. That's all you can ask when you play on the road. Remember this, guys. Remember this. We got three more road games. Three more in the conference on the road. They're going to be this tough. And that's the reason you just got to keep on hammering. It'll, things look a little bleak in the third quarter, but somebody made a play and got us back. Great job. Hey, it's tough to win on the road. It's been a long time since Auburn beat an SEC team like that. You guys are going to have a heck of a year if you keep on getting better. You got to believe in yourself and keep getting better. Great job. Great job. <laughs>
from the Jonathan B. Lovelace Museum. And it's been two days now, Coach, but uh, it still feels good. 42-14 over Mississippi State on the road. It's great to win on the road in this conference. It's so tough. And I was proud of our players. It's the fourth game in 18 days. We're a little leg weary, but, uh, you know, we won the fourth quarter. And I tell you what, what a great fourth quarter it was. And that dressing room uh, was real. That, those spontaneous things don't happen very often. And, of course, uh, I even enjoyed the... Uh, Powerade shower and all that. That was fun. Well, it, you know, there's a lot of frustration that builds up in, in this game of football because of the time that you put in. And, and we hadn't been, we, we won two games, but, and we lost one, but we hadn't been successful in how we wanted to be successful. We made mistakes and, and we felt like we weren't hitting on all cylinders in the fourth quarter tonight. Our guys played really well. And I think all those frustrations just came out and, and uh, Powerade was going everywhere and the players were jumping up and down. It was Kind of, it was great to see young guys have fun because they've really worked hard to achieve something like that. A true celebration it was. Now let's go to the dressing room and talk to some of those players. Yeah, we, we said uh, coming out here, we said we turned, we got five turnovers, we'll win the game. We got six, so we'll come to our goal tonight. Yeah, they kind of, <clears throat> they came out and um, did a, a bunch of crazy stuff that kind of confused us and, and uh, had us off a little bit. But we came back after halftime and adjusted. We adjusted on the sideline and we came out and we did our job. Did what we had to do, put points on the board. You did? Well, we was going for five, you know, but hey, six, six better. <laughs> Hopefully next game we'll get six. We're going to keep trying to progress, you know what I'm saying? Keep going. The offense, you know, proved that they can put points on the board and as well as the defense proved that we can cause turnovers. It was an all-around effort by everybody on you know, both sides of the ball, and that just shows that we're a good team. Blitz is on. Cobb has the snap, and he throws in the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Auburn. This game felt like a big game because it was national television, and uh, give them credit, they have a really good home field advantage at State. They do a good job of getting their fans involved. A few cowbells we heard ringing in the stands, and uh, it was loud. We had four illegal procedure penalties, and that's one thing we'll have to address the next time we go on the road, but uh, it, was a, it was a great night for college football. The weather was beautiful. It was actually hot, too, and, and uh, you know we felt it a little bit starting in the beginning of the game. Okay, the Tigers begin slow but finish strong in this half. Let's take a look. National television on a Thursday night in Starkville, Mississippi. Coach. And a little humid. Uh, uh, we were caught a little bit by surprise, but it was a hot, humid early start. And and uh, but you can tell here our guys are fired up. It was this was kind of an emotional game for us. You know, we didn't win the last road game, and we wanted to play better this time around. This is the opening uh, play of the, the first drive. We took the ball, and Carnell runs it for. I don't know, 16, 17 yards. Uh, 16 yard gain, yep. And there's a quick slant over the middle on a second down call to Silas Daniels, who made a good catch. But the drive stalled. Stalled, and uh, you know, what we want to do is make them throw short passes, and that's one of the many that they threw. They completed some of them, but here's one thing we did great. We did put great pressure on the quarterback, Reggie Torbor, back again uh, for his first time since USC game and uh, had a great game force and put a lot of pressure on the quarterback there you can see it's second time he hits the quarterback as he throws the ball that was this is their second possession and now Auburn's second possession here's a little play action fake we put in just barely overthrow it to Lorenzo Diamond we'll get that play sooner or later here's uh, one of Daniel's eight punts or Damien's eight punts and had another great night almost out kicked his coverage here but good coverage on the outside uh, by Horace Willis State begins their touchdown drive now this was a definite momentum shift. It looked like you you all were, you know, had the momentum and were playing well until this happened. Well, what happened is they caught us on a couple of blitzes where, where uh, you know, we we uh, actually blitzed into the play here, but they run a little, had the perfect play call, but we missed tackles. And that's been our one of our biggest factors of not playing good defense is not tackling and missing tackles down the field. So uh, they got it down to one, they punched it in, and uh, they go ahead seven to nothing. And Auburn was in a shell for a little while right after this, but uh, just before the half, you'll see some things start to happen. Well, well, we th I thought this was a big key. We, they drive down, and their head 7 nothing. This and They miss about a, what, 35, 40-yard field goal, and then our offense starts to get a little bit untracked, and here's Carnell up the middle again. Good blocking up front. Our offensive line, as you can tell, is getting some good surge. He blocks and gets to the outside, uh, and the guy rolls up his knee a little bit there, but... but uh, Carnell's got strong legs. You can tell right or watch it. They try to roll him up and instead of tackle him, and and uh, you know he'll he'll break more more of those tackles. You know, then they'll get him down. Here's a quick pass to 
Marcel Willis on the outside. So another, another first down. Should have been a late hit call, but uh, here's a big play to Anthony Mix. I tell you what, Anthony's a true freshman, and that's his, that's uh, a touchdown pass that he'll never forget. Uh, here, here it is, a replay. Good protection. Daniel just learns to lay it up to him. He's 6'5", vertical jump 40 inches, and he can out jump most deep little DBs. Momentum is back with the Tigers now, and, and all three touchdown passes were spectacular plays, Coach. They, they really were, and it all starts with the offensive line. And, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of how, how we're coming together. We're still making some mistakes, but our offensive line's got to continue to improve. And uh, if we'll just give Daniel a little time, every time that uh, we, we have problems at quarterback position, we just don't give him enough time. Here's a, here's a they try to go downtown on Roger Hood, and he doesn't bite on it and gets the interception. Then we come back and throw a quick slant over to Devin uh, Aruma should do, and uh, he makes a good good play. Here's a little read from the outside option off the end. Daniel makes a good read, but we have to punt, and here's another good punt by Damon. Uh, and uh, we're very fortunate here. The ball kicks back, hits one of their guys in the leg. You can't advance this, but you can recover it. So we get it, and we come back and throw a quick slant. And we, uh, Marcel Willis weighs about 160 pounds, and he pulls our DB into the end zone. Uh, <laughs> That was an amazing play there. Great throw, good catch, and watch this. And they still hadn't got him down. He he could have run all the way to Tupelo if they'd let him. <laughs> but uh, that's the way to run the run the football after a catch. <laughs> 14 to 7, and we're feeling pretty good now. We've got our offense a little bit under under track. Uh, what they did is they weren't gonna let us run the football, and we had to take advantage of what they, they gave us in the air, and fortunately in the second second quarter we did that. Here they come back and and we've got the great pressure by Spencer Johnson. He knocks him out. Watch this. Watch the quarterback. This is what you don't do. Quarterback has got to tuck the ball away. Uh, Mayo Sal, as you can tell, we force him out of the pocket. Watch Mayo Sal. There he is behind him, and Mayo just keeps chasing him. That's, that's what good defense is about. You just keep chasing the football. Quarterback's got it out, and we teach him to strip it out. Watch him knock the ball out. Uh, Roger Hood comes up and gets the, gets the uh, recovery, and uh, that's one of their six turnovers that they had and, and again on the road you've got to create turnovers yeah the goal was to get five and you got six got six uh, here's great pressure from spencer johnson up the middle spencer played one of his better games uh, i tell you that middle number five is pretty quick he made us miss a lot of tackles but uh, here we call a timeout we make them punt with uh, less than 30 seconds to go uh, we fill the punt we get it upfield we don't take negative yards all we want here is three points we're trying to get it to the 40 yard line but here's the big play right before the half with about 20 seconds. We drop back, we go, we get one-on-one -on -one coverage from their corner, which was a little surprising. We hit, we hit uh, Ben Ob Oban Manu for a touchdown pass down the sideline, made it 21 to nothing. Big play with the Tigers. What a huge play to go up to just before the half. Professional football. Black got one set back and four wide receivers. Desperation play. Black's gonna throw in the end zone. Got him in wide open. Larson, he's got it. Touchdown, Albert. Touchdown, Albert. Reggie Slack was an all-SEC quarterback for the Tigers during one of the most successful eras in Auburn history. He ranks fifth all-time on the Auburn passing list. He will forever be remembered as the quarterback of the team that defeated Alabama 30-20 in 1989. The first time Alabama ever played on the Plains. Today, Reggie is back at Auburn and participating in Operation Follow-Through as he is putting the final touches on his Auburn degree. It's been one of the, the best experiences of my life. Um, I know, you know, many students that that attend university in general say that their college years are, are their best years, but uh, I can honestly say that my years here at Auburn were, were definitely the best years of my life. Uh, not only the experience of, of playing football here, but the experience of, of being a student, the experience of, uh, uh, of meeting uh, numerous people that have been that have become part of my life and uh, uh, have made some great friends and uh, become part of the Auburn family. And, uh, you know, when I came back to school two years ago, I was welcomed back in. Um, took a little catching up to do, but uh, uh, that, that feeling was still there, and uh, I'm glad to still be a part of it. Toyota. This week's Tiger of the Game is junior defensive end Reggie Tobor. 
In the 42-14 win over Mississippi State, the Baton Rouge native recorded three quarterback sacks and then caused and recovered a fumble that led to an Auburn score in the fourth quarter. Reggie Tobor, this week's Toyota Tiger of the Game. Uh, well, we talked about how big that score just before the half was, but the, the reason it's so big is because a team usually comes out and plays well with the ball to start the second half, and State did, but you still had a lead. They had the ball at the beginning of the second half, and very concerned because we, th they were making some plays on some gadgets that they had, and, and uh, we had a real good discussion at halftime about causing more turnovers because we knew we had to, had to play hard and still create more turnovers and give them some bad plays, but... You know, they came down and scored and made the ball game pretty close. Let's take a look at it. It was good to have that two touchdown cushion to start the second half because even though we stopped them two or three times here, Coach, they take it in and score, and that place would have gone crazy if they had tied it. Well, one thing that concerns me, Phil, is that is we're giving up too many third down conversions. Here's a fourth down conversion where they faked in the line fourth and one, and and, and uh, we knock him out of bounds and they go down and score. And, and a little con it's concerning to me that we, we're still giving up third and 10, third and 12s. We've got to be uh, more consistent on that. But again, that's, you got to learn that. And, and uh, here we, we even made a tremendous, a terrible mistake. We had 12 men on the field, but they scored. It didn't make any difference. And here we come back and do a play action boot to Cooper Wallace for 14 yards. And, uh, they won first down. Won first down. And they got in a, a different defense the second half. It confused us a little bit, especially Marcus McNeil there, number 73. Uh, it took us a little while to adjust, but we adjusted here. Here they come out and run the belly play. Uh, uh, it's a hard-knocking physical game. Here's a little screen pass. We had problems with the first half. Our coaches did a good job adjusting the second half. Then we get the ball back, and and uh, they continue to put the pressure on this this new defense that they had, which is really not new. We, we see it a lot. It's called bear defense. Daniel hurts his shoulder a little bit on the scramble, and we put Jason in the game, run the option, uh, on the option play, and we don't get anything. But I'll tell you, Hugh Nall did a good job of adjusting after this. Here they come back. They run the boot. Uh, Reggie Torbor adjusts. He has to throw the ball away. A lot of pressure on the quarterback, and that's what it's all about. Here uh, we stuff the run. A lot of pressure up front from the defensive line. Here's another look at it. You see good penetration by DeMarco McNeil, Torbor, Spencer Johnson. We played a lot of players. Uh, here's an, another big sack by Reggie Torbor. We just outrun the, the, the offensive tackle. He was even holding us, and we still got around. And here's a big play. It was third and one. We faked the ball on the side of the line of scrimmage. We don't have a great shot of it, but uh, and nobody else nobody did. did. But uh, Robert Johnson gets the ball down the field for about 30 yards, and then we still have another third down there to Marcel Willis. And, Here's a Cadillac on the outside. It just outruns them all to the end zone and game, set, match. Key, key thing is the defense stopped them twice with a one-touchdown lead until you could get it going and get that. That's get exactly that right. You have separation. To, yeah, it's a team sport, and there's another look at Carnell's run, but uh, we, we had the opportunities to score. You know, and off, the defense got the ball back, and, and that, that's what has to happen to win on the road. You have to have more opportunities than, that, than the other team. And good things start happening after this. Well, you can see we're starting to get excited. we got the momentum. We, we never lost it. Here they come back. They run a little play action. Next next play, and Reggie Torbor strips it out and gets the, gets the, uh, gets the ball. You know, the, the fourth quarter field, we had uh, 28 plays and had 26 runs. And uh, we just ran it right at them. And, and uh, look, you know, we were... We were feeling good about ourselves. We were getting stronger as the game went on. And, and you know, the thing about it is, you know, we could have thrown the ball because, because they, you know, their pass rush was, was really getting a little bit tired. But uh, we felt like just run the football and run the clock and, and uh, take the win. One more turnover coming here shortly, and uh, Auburn will tack on another. To finish strong like this on the road, Coach, that, uh, boy, that, that sends you home on the plane feeling. Yeah, you learn a lot of lessons. And here, uh, here they throw down the field. He catches the ball, gets possession, fumbles it. We get it in a little discussion by the officials. But uh, field goal. And the reason we did this was because I'd, I didn't want to take a chance in blocking it, running it back, and get this on film where other people have to look at it. And then we get the ball, and they were offsides, and we, we score our last touchdown. Brandon Johnson, great surge from Ben Nylon and Danny Lindsay and Monrico Crittington and Mark Perra. Our offensive line got stronger as the game went on, and that was the key to the, the football game. And you had a chance to score another touchdown. Well, we had one more chance. We moved it back down to, I don't know, the five-yard line. But, you know, 42 is enough on this night, and hopefully in the future we can continue to put this many points up.
coaches know to have a winning team, you have to have a great game plan. Our teams haven't even played a game in the conference yet, and that gives us a road win. Uh, winning, winning in this conference on the road is tough, and it's very important you know, that you, you win several on the road to have a chance to get to Atlanta. We got off to a great start. Now you have, uh, you've had a couple of days rest, and then you'll begin your preparation for Syracuse, a team that uh, you owe one. Yeah, we, we really do. It, it'll be a good football game, but we, we do need some rest, Phil. We need to get our legs back, and we've got some guys that are beat up that have played through a uh, little pain, but uh, now we've got a little time off, and uh, we've got a real good football team in Syracuse coming in. They, they play well. They, they've had a tough opening schedule, but uh, I remember last year they, they got off to a slow start, and they, they got to us pretty good in Syracuse, but it's a home game. Looking forward to coming back to Jordan Hare and having some more success. So it's Auburn and Syracuse, 8 o'clock start Saturday night at Jordan Hare. The Auburn Network will be on the air at 6 p.m. Join them and get all the pregame festivities, and we'll see you here Sunday. Auburn Network Production. Put away, wing back left, that's Cooper Wallace. Here is Campbell reaching under, taking the snap. Going to fake and roll out to his right and throw. Wallace has it at the two. He's in. Touchdown! second half it didn't look good the first half but we kept pounding you know we got 17 points down 17 points down and we came back and won that ball game defense played great the second half offense played great kicking game came back and played great the second half we got to do it for four quarters good job we got two days off talk to your coaches when you're gonna watch the film you get you guys are injured make sure you get healthy four and one guys let's keep rolling <laughs> This is the old celebration and has finally settled down after the big, huge, wonderful, what other adjective that you can add to uh, this overtime? Character game. builder. Character builder, all right. Yeah, that's right. What a tough game. It was a great game. Uh, Syracuse came to play, even though they had a week off, and, and uh, they gave us some problems the first half. We got down 17 uh, points, and uh, I'm proud of our team. We fought hard and came back and uh, made some plays the second half. I don't think I've ever seen a team come through as much adversity, overcome as many problems, and still win the game, Coach. We had problems in the kicking game, problems on offense, problems holding on to the football, and then we couldn't tackle on defense on, on a couple of the long plays that they had. So uh, we didn't have anything going for us. But we came in at halftime, our coaches settled the players down, and uh, it was just good to see the momentum start the second half. We went out and we held them three, uh, intercepted the ball, scored, got back in the ball game, and uh, it was all downhill from there. Indeed it was. Let's go to the dressing room and talk to some of the players. Well, you know, guys came out in the second half, showed a whole lot of character. <clears throat> the coach believed in us. They told us that we know we can win if we go out and play hard and limit our mistakes and just come out and play hard. And in the second half, guys stepped it up. Congratulations to our defense and our old line running back with Stevens. Everybody just came out and played with a lot of heart second half. Yeah, we started off so they jumped on us early. But uh, we came here in the second half, halftime coach just told us, you know, saying we got a shot character. They come out and fight in the second half, but don't quit. And we didn't quit. We came out on top of them, you know, so thank you. Right, right. Uh, that first half, you know, we, we really stunk it up. You know, we weren't playing too good. So that second half, we came in halftime, you know, and told ourselves that we weren't going to be denied the second half. So therefore, you know, we produced, you know, defense played great. You know, but we hung in there. Tubbs gave a pretty emotional talk at halftime. And we went out there and played our odds out and laid it on the line and came away with a victory. So no more you can ask. We feel that any level we put on the field can go at any time. So any, any combination, it don't matter. Somebody goes down, we got somebody that can step up and replace without missing a beat. We're in the Tiger Den where uh, Auburn showed uh, the visiting recruits some kind of football game. A uh, long football <laughs> game, too. <laughs> Indeed, they did. Uh, We'll get into the game now, and uh, we will see a, a team that we thought, Coach, was going to be, you know, kind of down, having to play at 9 o'clock at night, but these guys were ready to play. They were ready to play. They had a week off. Uh, you know, they were anxious to play a football game, and 
talked to their coach before the game. They were all healthy, and uh, he felt good about uh, you know all their guys coming back. And you know they were one and two, but he said they had a better football team than what they showed. All right, we get into this rough first half for Auburn. We'll get right into it, coach. There's a lot to see here. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of not so good. A lot, a lot of bad. Uh, <laughs> this is the first play of the game. We throw a corner out to uh, Marcel Willis. Good throw and good catch. And you know we they had short corners, so we decided to go at them. And this starts the comedy of errors. You know, uh, Daniel Cobb just opened up the wrong way. Fumble. Uh, he made one of his tackles for the year. We hope he doesn't make a lot of tackles the rest of the year. Didn't have to do that, but uh, that that was just a. Wasn't very good. And here, two. here we come back. We stop them. Defense does a great job. They have to throw the ball out and and uh, end up kicking a field goal. 27 yarder. 27 yards. And uh, again, defensively, just kept us in the game. It, this, this thing could have got ugly if we, our defense didn't show up, but they came to play. Here's a good run by Carnell. They just grabbed him by one arm. Good block by Robert Johnson on the outside. Uh, they had a pretty good defense. They weren't going to give us a lot. They, they were going to bend a little bit, but not break. Here's a punt return. Watch this over on him. Drops the ball. We missed one tackle, two tackles, he's gone. We had him contained, but uh, how many times have you seen a punt returner drop the ball? Everybody relaxes. Everybody relaxes and they and, uh, either overrun it or, or have missed tackles. And they go ahead 10 to nothing. Man. Auburn comes back on its next possession. Nice play here to Ronnie Brown. Come back, and uh, this is kind of a, a man breaker. We, we get the fullback down the middle of the field and throw the ball to him. 29-yard gain. Here's the, they get the ball back. Here's a counter play that they rushed for 300 yards on us last year. They ran it one time. We stopped it for a minus five. Our coaches and players did a good job on this. Here's a deflected ball in the air. Uh, Derek Graves on the interception. He came in because Don Terrace Thomas had got beat up a little bit. And defense gets us back in the game. And here we go back. And for some reason, Daniel throws it right to him. A receiver wasn't even looking. We have got to make sure we don't turn the ball over in the red zone. Uh, we just can't make that mistake. Here they come back, run a draw play, and defense uh, rallies around, gang tackles. Late in the second quarter now. Yeah, here's uh, Tommy Jackson on the draw play, I think, on about third and eight. Big play from him. And, it, you know, just... He's playing more. Yeah, he's playing more and more. Here's a safety blitz, Junior Rose Green, putting pressure on their quarterback. He throws the ball away. Defense playing with a lot of emotion. Here's a third down play to Silas Daniels, getting the first down, keeping the chains moving. Here's a play-action pass. Uh, throwing to Devin Aruma should do, and oh. oh, he put it right on the money. We just got to make the play. Cornerback made a good play, but uh, maybe a little bit underthrown. Here's a toss sweep. We got a blitz up the middle. Bad angle by Donna uh, Young, and you know when you make a bad angle on a on a running team like this, you got problems. And still, we should have made the play at the five, but uh, it was one of those nights. Seventeen nothing now. Seventeen nothing. Got to score. And, and got to get something yeah, for the well, half. Well, we got to do something for the half. And here they get in man coverage, and we hit a crossing route to Marcel Willis, and. You know, Marcel, you know, he's a, he's a great receiver. Just lacks a little bit of speed right here in the stretch. And uh, we get it down to the 10-yard line. And, and you know, we seven points have been great, but three at least get three points. And uh, they hold us, and Damon gets the three points right before the half. So it's a disappointing first half, 17-3. One of Shug's boys, who is an outstanding businessman nowadays. That happens a lot of times to football players. They go in business and do well. Well, it's... They know how to compete. They know how to work hard, and uh, work ethic is one of the things that we try to teach these young men when they come to school, and obviously he learned a lot of it. Steve Wallace knew how to compete when he was here at Auburn, and then he became a great uh, NFL player. Well, you know, there's a lot of guys that's gone on from here and been very successful both on the field and in, in, the, in the business field, and he's one of them. And let's uh, relive some of the Steve Wallace era here at Auburn. Steve Wallace was the cornerstone of Auburn's offensive line in the early 1980s and was an all-SEC honoree his senior season. Number 78 went on to a long career with the San Francisco 49ers and today is the proud owner of three Super Bowl rings. Now he has returned to his southern roots and owns a custom construction company in the Atlanta area. He's also a big brother for today's players. I like the idea of uh, establishing a uh, mentoring uh, program where we can come in here and kind of uh, help uh, some of these younger guys with, di with direction. Uh, I was quite often at uh, 18 and 19 years old, you don't really have a clue to what you're supposed to do on a college campus, but for us to come, come in here and give a little uh, added advice and, uh, and to be supportive and let them know that everything's going to be okay 
And the main thing is just go to class and, and, and try your hardest. And, and that's all you can ever ask for a kid. Steve Wallace sets a high standard and is a great role model for today's Auburn Tigers. Time now for the FedEx Air and Ground Game, brought to you by FedEx. Need reliable express or ground delivery services? Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx, the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. Through the air, this week's top play came in the fourth quarter, when quarterback Jason Campbell hit fullback Brandon Johnson for a 34-yard touchdown. On the ground, tailback Carnell Williams scored from eight yards out, his second touchdown in overtime, to give the Tigers the win over Syracuse. There's get the feeling, Toyota. This week, the Toyota Tiger of the game is the Cadillac, Carnell Williams. The sophomore from Atala rushed the ball 40 times for 202 yards and two touchdowns in overtime. The final one, the game winner, Carnell Williams. This week's Toyota Tiger of the game. As we start to get back into the second half, did you feel you had any room for error coming out? Second no, half? we didn't feel. We, we knew that they were going to get the opening kickoff the second half, and we knew it was very important that we start the game, start the third quarter off positive and uh, obviously our defense went out as we'll see here and got us off to a great start indeed they did let's look at the action got to make something happen and make it happen early coach. opening drive for Syracuse second half and we needed a break like this they tipped the ball and Carlos Rogers comes up with one of his two big time interceptions the defense got us back in the game you know they didn't make but one first down in until uh, 10 minutes to go in the uh, fourth quarter here's Jason Campbell on a quarterback draw we went with Jason Campbell the second half because Daniel turned his ankle a little bit and he just wasn't 100%. Here's a quarterback sneak to put us down 17 to 10, and uh, things are looking a little bit better here now. Defense stalwart through this, as you say there. Reggie Torbor, I tell you, Reggie Torbor came to play again. He's uh, He's been a difference maker for us this year. He, he and the rest of the defense, they're playing with a lot of enthusiasm. There's our great fans you know, cheering this group on. They, they, they can smell victory. Here's Jason scrambling around. They were holding our running back there, and Ronnie finally broke out and on a pretty good game down the field. Good block by Marcel Willis, and now we're getting something going. Take a look at that one one more time, and after this big play, though, you go for it on fourth down, and they intercept the ball down on the goal line, which is the same thing as a punch. Yeah, I'm sure their coaches wasn't real pleased with that, uh, that decision for him to intercept it, but it's hard to tell a defensive guy not to catch the football. That's right. But uh, here they come back after the interception. We've got great field position. They run a screen pass, and uh, we've got to tackle better right here. We'll overrun it a little bit. Our, our quickness hurts us sometimes when we're getting to the football. We overrun the ball. And, but uh, here's another out and up on Carlos Rogers, but Carlos not going to have anything to do with it. Great, great play by a corner. You know, guy just, he's getting more experience as the, as the day goes. And need to stay behind his blockers a little bit, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take the interception. Big and turnover. A, and again, down on the goal line, going in for go for the touchdown. The you know, we had toss sweep call here, and, and you can just tell by that just little uh, little insert there that Jason just pulled out too quick, and that's just inexperience, not playing enough with the, with the starting group uh, this season. Here's a sprint out pass, almost intercepted. Good play by the defense. We kept putting pressure on them all night. Now here we come back on offense. Jason is uh, he's going to have to learn to slide a little bit. You know, he makes a pretty good target at six six. But, uh, you know, one good thing about it, he'll run the football, and that's what we've got to do. We've got to take advantage of what they'll give us. Here's, here's a great run by, by Cadillac. I tell you, you know, they catch him from behind here, but that, that little corner they got right there, can, he, he can really run. But watch him, watch him break. Uh, he just turns our defensive back around, and, and he makes it look easy. Big play. What a night, what a night, what a night for that young man. Well, we're getting the momentum back a little bit, and... Again, our fans have kept us in the ball game. Here's a play. Just I tell you, you really look bad sometimes when you on defense when they, somebody runs a boot on you. But they were keying on Carnell here so much. Look at them. They got seven or eight guys going to Carnell, and Jason does a good job of faking and Cooper Wallace catching the ball going in for the score. That makes it 17-17. New ball game. We're back in it, and we fought hard to get back. And now they're back on the offense. They throw the ball down the field, and our defensive backs have really played well in the last couple of weeks, knocking the ball. There's Roger Could. We're playing a lot of defensive backs. It's really going to help us down the stretch. Another third and long coming here. Third and long. Great pressure by Reggie Torbor. Hits him by the time he throws the football. Uh, defense is playing with a lot of enthusiasm. We look like we're getting getting stronger as the game goes. Here we go, go ahead, back. Go drive coming. Yep, this is the quick pass to Ben Obanu. 
Uh, I tell you, this is one of the best tackling football teams I've seen. We we didn't we didn't get a lot of yards after contact. Third There's and a, two, cross them up, coach. We crossed them up. We ran the fullback down the middle on on man coverage, and uh, you know something Bobby Petrino saw in their, their defense all week. And I tell you, that put us ahead 24-17. Felt pretty good. They hadn't made made a first down really until this point. So uh, you know, ap after we get this seam right here to Brandon Johnson, you know, on the sideline, you know, we told our defense we've got to go out and we've got to make big plays. But we made a couple of couple of silly mistakes here on this last drive that really cost us. So they put together a long drive as the clock ticks down in regulation. And we're going to see them score with 23 seconds uh, left. 23 seconds. Into overtime. Well, you know, they got a clip right there. They push a rattler from behind. You know, you know, it was one of those things. We weren't going to get too many calls in, in this game the way we were playing. We didn't deserve them. But uh, there's our fans. You know, they're, they're keeping our defense fired up. But they've worked the ball down the field. 23 seconds left. They run a sprint out pass. This little kid did a good job. He threw the ball right. Only place he could throw it for him to catch it, and they score with 23 seconds. Okay, we're going to first overtime. And uh, they run a little cross buck action out of the backfield, and Wayne Dickens makes a great play. Here's a sprint out pass. Watch Carlos Dansby come up right. Accelerate. They wanted to throw the ball back to the fullback on the backside, and Carlos makes the, makes the stop. We'll see that again, and you can see Carlos really line him up coach he lined him up and see he's looking back for the throwback they tried to trick us on this and we played it pretty well defense stayed at home big play now they're going to try a field goal and you know the ball hardly even moved and you know when i saw that happen i i was thinking well every way everything else is going they're going to pick this <laughs> thing up and score with it but our defense rallied around now all we've got to do is get three points three points and the ball game's over we run the ball with cadillac on the inside zone good blocking up front by the offensive line he makes people miss down to the 11 yard line so on third down, you decide to go ahead. Watch and one hand come up. One hand. Oh, my. I don't know. How, the guy didn't he hardly jump off the ground. And uh, I don't know whether Damon hit it a little fat or uh, whatever. But here we come back. We're on offense first now. And it's uh, a third down play. And he throws a good bootleg pass to Marcel Willis. Uh, we're moving down the field. Here's, here's Cadillac. Watch this move. Watch him take one step right there. 37 almost breaks his leg. And Carnell runs in for the <laughs> score. We're going to see it from the end zone here. Carnell does the best job of a running back I've ever seen of running full speed around a corner. You coach that, don't you, Coach? Well, you, no, you really <laughs> don't. Uh, watch, he gives him a little stiff leg right there, and he takes a good lick right here. A little 25 came up. He really didn't want a whole lot of it. But they come back, and they get the ball, and they run the wishbone for the first time, and they run a cross buck, and they score and make it 31-31. So we come back, and they get the ball first on the third overtime, and here's a toss sweep, and Junior Rose Green makes a, a big play. Just kind of takes them out of field goal range, makes them run a screen pass, there's Mark Brown on a great tackle. Uh, defensive guys swarm around the ball. You know, the defense had a lot of lot of energy at the end of this game. Here's 44 the, yarder. Pretty you know, good. Yeah, 44 yards. Hit it right down the middle. Uh, we almost blocked it, but now we're coming back on offense. Here's play action. Uh, here's Lorenzo Diamond. Good throw and catch. Get it down to the 15-yard line. I tell you, these guys, I've never seen a group tackle like this group. They really tackle well. Here's the inside zone on third and two. Carnell just goes up inside. They had a little blitz on. He runs it to the end zone for the touchdown. We earned everything we got in this game. It was one of those hard-fought games where, you know, Syracuse came in and made some things happen. We got behind. It's great to see a football team come from behind 17 points and win a game like this because it will be a character builder for us down the stretch. Coaches know to have a winning team, you have to have a great game plan. Coach, two games in a row. Well, it's it, it's fun to see these guys have fun. We played five games in September. We're four and one. Most people didn't give us a chance to to to, to be that good. Uh, we've improved. Now we've got a week off to get everybody healthy and get ready to start back in conference race. Not so much preparation as getting everybody healthy that off week, and then you get into preparation. Yeah, and you know the main thing is get everybody focused again on technique and fundamentals because we've gotten away from them because of all the games in such a short period of time. But uh, we competed. We've gotten better. Now we've sat back a little bit and learned from what we did, and hopefully we, uh, you know get back to the winning ways when we get back to Arkansas. So it's the week off, and the Razorbacks come to Jordan-Hare in two weeks. We'll be back with that for you. Thank you for joining us. See you then. This has been the Auburn... He looks.
Jackson. He throws, and the ball is intercepted out of midair by Carlos Dansby. An incredible play by Dansby. With all that athletic ability, he just reached up and plucked it out of the air as he was rushing the quarterback. One, two, one, two, three, four. football right there guys that's here sir. that's here y'all worked long and hard for that it's been coming we just hadn't been able to put all the pieces together the day they came together we got to remember that we got to remember how we did it it's not as hard as you think if you play together and play as a team that's what it's all about i'm proud for everybody and I'm proud for the coaches coaches y'all did a great job hey! Welcome to the program. We're in the Heisman Room, just off the Auburn dressing room and the recruiting lounge, where things are still a bit hectic out there. Coach, uh, that was a fervent war eagle there. It was. It's been a long two weeks, Bill, for players and coaches, but uh, and fans. But it was a it was a great win. Uh, very enthusiastic. A lot of emotion. Uh, obviously, you could see that in the dressing room. Uh, we we played a good football team today. We beat a good football team, and we're getting better. And you jumped them and never let up. Didn't let up. Uh, we didn't turn the ball over. We, you know, we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot. But the best thing of all was we came out of the blocks for the first time in, in what eight games. We came out. We played hard. We played Auburn football, and we took control early and 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 kept it the whole game. Let's go to the uh, Auburn dressing room and talk to some of the players. Well, you know, I just want to take my hats off to the O line, defense, and the coaching staff. You know, we all came out, played together, played hard. You know, guys showed a lot of character. And, uh, you know, our team going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to hopefully get better. We, Coach put a great game plan in. Um, he told us he challenged us. He, he said, if y'all want it, y'all will go get it. And we won it. So we, we came to play today. Uh, we played together. We played hard. We played simple. Yeah, the coach was saying all week long, and said nobody believes in us but us. And you know, we don't hear the believe to be LSU to a top 10 team. And though we have faith in ourselves, and that's all we need. We have people in the locker room, that's all we worry about. We want those people to stay outside. And the coach just kept us going all week, and we had um, actually the game plan. So we worked all week for, you know, and all week, you know, we've been playing, you know, half a game, half a game. We finally came out tonight and put it all together. Uh, Auburn fans over the years. Coach, you mentioned the good start. What, what did you have in mind? For, for every game that we've played so far, Phil, with a young football team, we've been kind of feeling our way around. Tempo this week in practice was... We want to start fast. We want to create the, the, the situation where we have control early and not wait till the second half. And our coaches did a great job. Our players did an outstanding job. And we just we did just that. We jumped on them early and we, we kept control of the football and the game. And let's take a look. Rainy day at Jordan Hare, but uh, the crowd came with their rain slicks and they were ready, Coach. And got there early and it was great to see that. The students were there and the band was loud. It was a it was a good college football day. It was it was not hot, but it was a little wet, but uh, the field was handled superbly by our, our field crew staff. And here we started out. We wanted to start fast, and we caused a fumble right off the bat, and we get it and get great field position, and that was a big key for the first half. Here's a second or third down throw by Jason. They, they knock it down, and then we line up and try Philip Yost's first field goal, and there you can see it just barely hooked outside the, the bar, plenty of distance, but... Uh, He'll be fine down the stretch. Here we come back on defense. and They've made a couple of first downs. Yeah, we, we're swarming the ball, and Mark Brown played one of his better games. He and Carlos Dansby are, are becoming uh, great teammates and playing awfully well together along with uh, Don Terrace Thomas. Here's a third and eight. We force the ball down the field. Traveris Robinson intercepts the ball down the sideline. Good blocking downfield. Can't block below the waist. Stay high. Good block. And... Uh, Big turnaround. That was probably one of the big keys of the game. 64-yard return on that interception. Yeah, here's a quick throw to uh, Marcel Willis, who played another good game for us, especially blocking downfield. Good protection for the offensive line. Third and four coming. Third and four. And here's, here's a play that's going to be beneficial to us down the stretch. And watch how he's learning to run. He's falling forward, not standing tall, not taking licks, and Jason's going to have to do that. And uh, that's just game from experience. Here we come back. Watch this. Ooh. Untouched. Great block by Brandon Johnson, the fullback. We'll get a replay of this. Watch how big the hole is, and you can't only see Brandon here, but he really got a good good block right there on number 11 there, all SEC linebacker James, and we walk in for the touchdown. 
Seven nothing. Seven nothing. They come back and we are going to stop the run and stop number ten and thirty one. We we'll go. Our game plan. Our game plan was to make number twelve beat us, and they run a little shovel pass there, and uh, we weren't we weren't be denied there. Reggie Torbo, of course, being from Baton Rouge, he was fired up about this game. Here's uh, Roger Hood on his first punt return, breaks a tackle, gets to the sideline, uh, almost a block in the back there by by somebody, but uh, we made the play. Here's here's Jason stepping up. He's one step away from getting down. There's a late hit right there. I don't know why they didn't call that. They're supposed to take the protect the quarterbacks, but uh, 80,000 people the wonder too. Yeah, that was wasn't a very good call. But here's a, a Ronnie Brown breaking tackles, but we have to punt. And uh, here's what we call hang middle. We punt it down the field. They block in the back right there. So is the call the ball goes in the end zone, but they take over the 10 because of the penalty. No penalties in special teams. That's a that's something to harp on every play. Here they, they have to start from the 10-yard line. They run the ball inside our defensive front. Uh, Junior Rose Ring comes up, makes a, makes a big play. End of the quarter. Here we're going to get great field position. We force them to punt. Watch this. Roger Hood's carrying the ball outside. He's got to carry it with both hands. Fumble the ball and turn the ball over and give them the field position back, and that was a turnover. Some people uh, question sometimes, you know, you have to hold on the football. I do not tolerate turnovers, and we're not going to have that. So we replaced Roger Caffrey this and put Marcel Willis in. Here they come back, and they they make a turnover, but it's actually caused by Carlos Dansby. Watch the height he gets on that ball. We're how, did, how did he do that, Coach? Well, I don't know. He, he, you know, he, the deal is you just jump and try to get your hands up, and a young quarterback, inexperienced, uh, instead of pulling it down, threw it right into him. Third and 17 here after a penalty. Get the... Uh, the completion, but it's not enough. Not enough, and uh, another great punt coming in. Boy, it, Damon Duvall had a big, had a great, had day. a great day, and a big part of this win for us. And uh, it's good to see that after last week's uh, uh, loss. But uh, we give them bad field position here. They run a bootleg out of the end zone, almost gets to him, but was forced to errant throw. And uh, it was good to see Don A. Young come out and play such a good game. Here we come back and watch great this play. Throw. Great, great play. play. Throws off balance. Throws a perfect spiral to. A room as you do, and he gets down to the five. Here's Chris Butler in for one of his first carries. Gets the outside, and looks like he scores, but the official was in a very good coach. position there. He, he's fine. He's got a full grow, and we'll, we'll know more about him today. There's our first field goal by Philip Yost, and he hooks it in, which is a, actually a bad, bad angle, but he makes it. Here we come back, and we've got to stop him. We've got to get good field position. This is a again. key stop in the game. This coach. is it. I, I thought this was a major blow to them, uh, keeping the ball and and uh, giving our guys good field position. Uh, there's DeMarco McNeil uh, causing a fumble. They didn't give it to us, but uh, Mayo Sal and Rashad Walker on the tackle. Uh, we for they forced a punt. Here we go with Ronnie Brown. Watch this right here. This set the tone. Number 36. Whew. I'm sure he got the number of Ronnie Brown after that play. Uh, uh, that, that right there will give you many nightmares. Here was the big tight end. Here's a new play we put in, kind of faking the option, coming back to the tight end across Robert. Johnson have one of his better games. And here comes the Volkswagen, Trey Smith, <laughs> on the outside. We uh, put this play in for him last week on, I think, second or third play against Florida. And uh, I tell you what, you don't arm tackle the Volkswagen. He, he, uh, he's, he's low to the ground. He's huh? low to the ground and got, <laughs> got strong wheels. And I tell you, he, he's going to be fun to watch. We'll have another play a little later on to watch. Here was another big one. We got penalized. We kicked off in the 30, and Damon kicks the ball in the end zone. Big, big turnaround. That's big because this is the best return team in the league. Best return team, and I tell you, uh, Don Terrence Thomas doesn't quite need to make that many gestures after a play, but big first half for the Tigers. 17 nothing. I have the honor of being the second United States president to ever visit Auburn University. The first was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I don't know how he started his speech, but here's how I'm going to start mine. War Eagle! Not bad, Coach, the leader of the free world with a big War Eagle. We saw it on the, the Jumbotron before the game. And our players didn't get to go, nor our coaches. We, we practiced Thursday, but we saw all the helicopters. What an exciting day for Auburn University having the president here on campus. Indeed it was. Let's uh, look back at one of the great figures in Auburn history, a man who helped build the Auburn football program to what it is today, and that would be former athletic director Jeff Beard. When you look around,
around the Auburn campus, Jeff Beard's legacy surrounds you. His vision is seen in Beard Eves Coliseum, in Plainsman Park, and of course, in Jordan-Hare Stadium. During his 22-year tenure as athletic director, Jeff Beard built the foundation in bricks and mortar for what is the Auburn athletic program in the year 2002. For the good of the whole athletic program, what Coach Beard started back in 1951 was a very, very good thing. I hate to think where our athletic program would be if he had not had the vision and the commitment and the stick to it to make it happen. In 1951, Coach Beard was instrumental in making a decision that has shaped Auburn history ever since. It was to hire an Auburn alumnus named Ralph Shug Jordan as head football coach. Then we decided to decide on a contract. Well, from the two previous coaches, Dr. Drone wanted to say a three-year contract. I wanted to fire. And I told Dean Allen I wanted to fire. So he told Papa, he said, Ralph, uh, Jeff wants a five-year contract for, for sure. And takes that long to build up all the loose ends we got. He said, I just, I just hate to give a five. They, I thought we were going to have to separate them. They don't like they got in a fight. And finally he gave in. So I went out on the front veranda of the president's match, and it was, the yard was full of all the boys and people. And I, I took Shug with him and introduced him as a new head coach. And boy, they tore up the town. If he had not made his dreams and his vision for Auburn in the 1950s and 60s become a reality, None of the things we enjoy today would be here. He is the bedrock on which Auburn's modern day athletic program is founded. Time now for the FedEx Air and Ground Game, brought to you by FedEx. Need reliable express or ground delivery services? Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx, the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. In the win over LSU, the top ground play came in the fourth quarter, when freshman tailback Trey Smith somehow kept his balance turn would look to be a loss into a 36-yard game. The top airplay came in the third quarter when quarterback Jason Campbell hit freshman wide receiver Devin Ramachudu for a 48-yard pass. That's this week's FedEx Air and Ground Game. Coach, I look back on that stop just late in the second quarter where the score was 10 to nothing. You stopped him, didn't let him get back into the game there and got another touchdown and that made all the difference. Made all the difference, and I, I tell you, just kept the momentum going. Our players felt good about themselves, but sometimes when, when you're feeling your way around and, and you gain control, you don't know how to keep control. And this game, we learned a lesson of how to go out and say, hey, we can play aggressive football and still remain in, in total dominance of the, of the football. And uh, let's get into the third quarter where you'll see a team that continues its dominance today. Auburn gets the ball, but can't move in their first series. Here's LSU's first. They run the option play, and Carlos Rogers plays it perfectly and puts them in a long yardage situation, and, and their quarterback can't get them out of a jam. We force them to punt. We worked real hard on returns this week. This was a good job. Marcel Willis did it for us a little bit last year, and he's, you can tell he's fairly elusive, but the thing he does, he catches the ball, and he's got the most sure hands on the team. Here's a big throw and catch. Watch this one-handed catch oh. that Devin Aruma should do. True freshman. Boy's going to get some headaches to a lot of folks That's around not here the for the next time few he's years. Done that this no, year. it isn't. I tell you what, he's getting better and better. All the receivers are over new and, and uh, uh, Anthony Mix. Uh, here's a run by, by uh, the Dodge Ram, <laughs> Ronnie Brown. Four wheel drive. <laughs> he, he, can, he can put it in that next gear. You know, he really can. I tell you what, and he'll run over you when he has to. And right like right there, I tell you what, he's got great leg strength and. He's going to get better and better. We just got to keep his confidence up. And here's a big, big play. First down and goal. And Bobby Petrino and the offensive coaches call a tremendous play. And, and uh, Jason puts it right on Robert Johnson's number and for the touchdown. And that was a big, big touchdown. Put us at 24 to nothing. Here they come back. And, uh, and we're, we're going, we know we're going to face either the option play now or they're going to throw the ball because they're behind 24 points. And, we play a little bit more aggressive. Carlos, Carlos Rogers on a great play. We come back on offense, and, and uh, Ronnie's looking for 36 again, but he can't <laughs> find him and on the same sideline. But uh, he's, uh, he still gets yards. There's the Volkswagen again on the inside on a little inside trap. Good blocking by 
Monrico Crittington and Danny Lindsay and Ben Nylon. Uh, Ronnie Brown to the outside on a little handoff sweep, and the guy that takes it to beating there is Ben Obman, who he gets run over and missed a field goal. Missed a field goal, and again, we told the guys, listen, you, you've got to keep 14 and 31 out of the game. Just stay with them, and everything will take care of itself. Here's a great play out of Roderick Hood, and uh, just don't give them the big play. No pass interferences. In the past, we would have interfered with that guy. And now we've forced the option play to, to be soft and keeping the quarterback's hands. Here they come back with Dominic Davis and, and our Traveris Robinson senior safety is really playing hard. Uh, here's a quarterback draw to the outside. Dan's being, and Mark Brown played one of his better games. Uh, it's good to see these guys have fun and play with a lot of emotion, and that's what football's all about. Third and eight coming here. Third and eight, big play of the game. Watch, we had a blitz on. Dansby cover number 14, Clayton. Watch Rose Green push uh, Clayton out of bounds and watch Clayton run, and Dansby's no slow guy, but uh, if we'd got a little bit more, we would have scored, but great play by the defense, and I think we got six turnovers. And here we come back. And third this and is, six. This is a third and six, and this is the experience that Jason's learned. Watch how he leans forward now and gets the first down. Big play. Uh, number 11 is a little frustrated. Then we come back and run the draw play on third and 20. They run a free safety blitz and run right beside Ronnie, and and the, and the Dodge Ram runs in the end zone. 31 nothing now. There's Eddie Grand, the keeper of all those guys. I tell you, running back coach has done a super job keeping these guys uh, focused on what they're doing and putting them in and out. Now he's got his hands full. He's got a couple more guys hurt, so so uh, you know we've got to get back and get them healthy. Ray Smith becomes a key member of this team. Yeah, he, he does. All the guys do. And there's a, another big play by Reggie Torbor, who played again one of his better games. There's uh, Don oh. Terrace Thomas, Jr. Rose Green, T.J. Jackson. Uh, there's an outside miss the play, and they and they score here. We got makes a tackle. Uh, we were going, we were thinking they were going to throw the ball there, being being down 31. But uh, they come back and we we put our hands team out for an onside kick, and they pushed it and. They kicked it to the wrong guy. Jarris McIntyre's got great hands. And then here comes uh, the Volkswagen. Watch him. One hand. You know, he's a great skier and ski boarder. And I think that's, that's, uh, that comes from, you know, that balance comes from that. And uh, as the clock ticks down, Auburn decides to take a knee at the two-yard line. 31-7 to final. Welcome back to the program. A 31 to 7 win over LSU and uh, Coach. Uh, was there any temptation to go ahead and score that last touchdown? No, there really wasn't. You know, you had 31 to 7, and we. Uh, I think they knew who won that football game. And and uh, you know, when you when you make a big play like that, you know, you want sometimes the fans want to, want to keep the momentum. But uh, I think that sends a pretty good message that hey, you know, that was enough points. We played a great football game and ended it on a great note. This turnaround started in the second half at uh, Gainesville. Now you've carried it through a big win. Now you've got to take it on the road. Got to go back on the road. And we've played on the road pretty well. We just hadn't finished a lot of games off. But uh, it'll be a tough game going back to Ole Miss. Uh, it'll be a lot of emotions. And again, we go back and uh, go to work in the practice field, put a great game plan together, hopefully, and go play as hard as we did today and let things take care of itself. So it's Auburn and Ole Miss from Oxford, an 11.30 kick. The Auburn Network on the air at 9.30 Saturday morning, and we'll see you here next week. Boeing is an Auburn Network production. Campbell's going to hand off to Brown. Brown gets a hole off the left side. 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. Brown's going to go. He's to the 10, the 5, down the far sideline. Touchdown! 49 yards for Ronnie Brown. Everybody listen. Guys, that was a team victory. They got a good football team. That offense came back out to play defense. That's what you got to do. When they're moving the ball, you got to bleed a little bit, but when you got a chance, you got to get that turnover. You did a great, great job. Offense, when you need it, you made the play. It's tough to win on the road, guys. It's tough, especially when an offense like that can turn the ball so quickly. Proud of you. We got the momentum going. We got to keep it going. That was a great Auburn football game there. We fought back from, from, from nowhere, came back. You know, they, they thought they had a sound. 
and when they thought they had us, that's when we jumped back and bit back. Good job. Heck, we are here at Vaught Hemingway Stadium, which so Tuberville is a very nice place, you know, with this new end zone in it. It is a nice place. There's a lot of people here today, and this is uh, a little more intimidating than it was the last few times we were here and when I coached here, but what a great football game. It was uh, from beginning to end, a lot of action. Both both teams played hard, and and uh, I'm I'm really happy for our players because, of, you know, winning a game, two conference games on the road is awfully tough, and uh, they accomplished that today. And you said going in, you had to stop their run and make them one-dimensional, and it, it finally worked. It ba basically <laughs> did. You know, and the thing that you want to do, Eli Manning, who's one of the best ones that we we played against, is is just giving him giving him enough looks to where eventually he'll make a mistake, and and that's what he did. He made three of them today, threw two three interceptions, and and uh, you know we we never stopped him. Obviously, the only thing we did, we just tried to control him and and score enough points to, to outscore him, and, and that's what happened. Let's go to the dressing room now and talk to some of those guys who defended so well today. You know, we just went out there and we just continued to just play hard. You know, we were going through a little adversity and we just we just had to put our, our back against the wall and everybody just made a stand. You know, the defense just went out there and continued to play. The offense played a great game and, you know, we just came out with the victory. We had to put it together in order to um, set the game. Our turnover was the key and we got um, good turnovers at the end of the game. That um, gave us momentum. We, took, so we knew we had to make big plays. We had to get turnovers like we do every game, you know. So, you know, he gave us opportunity. We went out and made an interception. We knew coming in, you know, that they couldn't run the ball too well, and we knew that they would try to establish the run. And if we stopped it earlier, that they would throw the ball. So that's what they did, and we just had to rush fast and did a pretty good job. That's some good homework. We're doing our program on a cool Saturday afternoon in Oxford, Mississippi, right after. A 31 to 24 Auburn win here at Vaught Hemingway. Very Stadium. cool. Very cool. <laughs> I'm not big on cold weather, Phil. Something we failed to mention. Auburn is now bowl eligible. Well, that's you know that that's a major step, and uh, a lot of people didn't think we could win uh, uh, at least 50 percent of our games. You know, because we had a very tough schedule, and people forget about that. But we kept hammering on and kind of getting one here and there, and and uh, we have uh, six wins now. But we're going to win more, and we've got more in sight. Okay, let's get into the first half action. It always helps to have that welcoming uh, party on the road, Coach. The Tiger Walk was big. I tell you, we had a great contingent of Auburn fans. And here we start out, we run a bootleg. Great. You can't see it, but Jason Campbell did a good job of just getting it off. They had a good blitz call. And we come back, and uh, they get the ball. We don't do anything on the first drive. And, and our defense steps up because they have good field position. And here's good pressure. Carlos Danzi right there on the sack. They said he got his face mask, but I hadn't seen that yet. Uh, he's trying to pull the ball out. You know, those... those uh, those face mask calls sometimes show up inadvertently. Here we go. We uh, pressure coming, and he uh, unloads high. Yeah, they get a first down off that penalty, and they try to throw it over the middle. And then we get the ball back deep in our territory. Not very good field position, but Ronnie Brown on one of his many attempts bangs it out for great, great yardage and good blocking by the tight end on the right side, Trooper Wally. Boy, he punishes this guy, Coach. Watch this. He runs over this. He's got the number of several of these DBs. They, they. Uh, they're gonna remember Ronnie. Here's a, here's a great play by where oh where is Spencer Johnson been? He's been gone for a month and a half, and he showed up early in this game. Oh man, did you need him too with all that pass yeah. rush? Great to have Spencer back, and he just picks up the level of our defense. Uh, there's our Auburn fans in the stands. Here we come back with play action. Lorenzo Diamond back in his home state. Got a touchdown pass right in his arms, and drops it. Oh my! But he'll make that one in the next few games. Uh, that's good experience. Here we come with a punt by Damon. Watch, they push us into the to the returner, and they call us close. If you get pushed in, it's not a five-yard penalty. Back judge didn't call it, but for some reason, these, these officials called, uh, call these close close calls. Here they come back. We're going to stop the run. That's a big thing. We stop the run on first and second down. We get the ball back. Pin watch, down there. Okay. Watch this run by Ronnie. Just breaks tackles. Number 44 has got pretty good speed there. He's one of the few seniors they had on defense. And great run. This was a momentum builder for us right here. Watch this. Watch the blocking on the on the side. There's the Auburn fans all fired up, and they needed something to cheer about, and that got them in the game. Watch this. He goes inside, breaks 85. He breaks a tackle right here, 17. Outruns 26, and uh, 44 just got a little too much speed, plus a corner had an angle on him downfield. Good run sure. by Ronnie Brown. He always goes down with people falling backwards. Yep, there's the poise of... Uh, of Jason Campbell waiting waiting for Anthony Mix to come across the middle and he came open. Here's a good throw and catch to 
I think Silas Daniels move, moving the ball down the field. Uh, here's a fourth down. Fourth and four. I decided to go for it, and, and uh, Robert Johnson makes a big play down to the one-yard line. Good blocking by the offensive line. Down on the goal line now. Down on the goal line. They get a little bit of push here on the left side, but they don't get push where we run the ball, which is uh, on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And uh, Ronnie Brown knocks it in behind Brandon Johnson, who does a good job blocking. He just kind of ran off uh, Brandon's hip there. And just, just, yeah, just an ISO call. It's just a kind of a junior high running play, and, <laughs> and they're starting to work for us. Here's a running play. They come back, and our off defensive line played exceptional. Here's a throw and catch. Watch this hit right here uh, by Carlos Rogers. Here's a third down. Watch this ball batted down by Reggie Torbor. We got an underneath man call there, and everybody was covered. Good, good job of the defensive line. Here comes Ronnie back again on the outside. Uh, he continues to run over defensive backs, making big plays. Here's uh, Devin Aruma should do on the same play that we ran to Trey Smith last week and tried to get him on him on the outside and just ran out of room. Third and one coming. How often have you seen this break? Third and one, and play? watch the blocking right there on the outside by. Lorenzo Diamond and don't block behind the football. That's what we was hollering on the sideline. <laughs> Their defensive back didn't even know it was coming. You'll see this again. And uh, as you said, this has happened many times this year on a lot of football teams. Third and one or fourth and one. Uh, people take chances and what they did, they they slanted everybody inside and we got a good block on the corner. They had their other corner in man coverage and Ronnie just runs right behind him, number 25 right there. And we go up 14 to nothing. Okay, the Rebels put together a pretty good drive. Uh, as the, we get down into the second. Yeah, quarter. you know, they converted three third down calls and one fourth down call here. Uh, here we hold them on the third down, and uh, they come back and go for it on fourth down and make it. But then they work down to the 12-yard line, and uh, this was third down, and we stopped them on a big third down big, charge. Big, Made them kick a field goal, which, which was actually a win for us, and we go in 14-3. to three. You couldn't have asked for a better half of football on the road, I don't think, Coach. No, especially on defense. Offensively, we sputtered a little bit, but defensively, we made the plays to, to get enough enough lead to go in at halftime to feel good about what we were doing. Coach, uh, I need one of those bobblehead dogs. What do you think? You probably will get one from me for Christmas, <laughs> okay. you know, and, and there's going to be a lot of people get them for Christmas from me, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you, that you look at and you don't know whether you're really proud of it or not. <laughs> Well, thanks to Arby for making them uh, available. Uh, as we, uh, before we get into the third quarter play, one of the reasons I'm sure that Auburn was able to win this game today, rush the passer all day, was because of strength and conditioning men, Kevin Young. I don't think there's any doubt that the way we've played the last few weeks, because we've had to play them all the way to the end, has been in great condition physically and mentally. And, and Kevin Yossel does a great job of that. He gets into the guys' minds. He works with them. They really enjoy working for him. And, and that's important because when you go to the weight room, there's not a lot of fun to it. But uh, he makes it fun, but he, he, he demands the respect and, and integrity from all the players, and it's really paid off for us. Earlier this year, Auburn's strength and conditioning program got a huge boost with the opening of the Dr. James T. Tatum Jr. Strength and Conditioning Center. The facility we had in the past was a very adequate facility. And the main thing that the new facility does for us, it gives us a heck of a lot more room. We've added some more pieces of equipment. We can be a lot more efficient with the amount of kids that we get in there and, we, and they get done. So the whole workout is a lot more efficient. And when it's more efficient like that, the kids work at a faster pace. So not only are they going through a strength, strength workout, but they get some conditioning effect in there too by working out quickly. Okay, listen up, man. We're doing three sets of three. You're going to stay at this weight. Stay at this weight. There's a lot of different things that are involved in, in one's philosophy as far as strength conditioning, especially for football. Basically, ours here in the weight room is that we're going to train the, the lower body first. And we train that lower body from the strength aspect by doing squat movements and things like that to strengthen the hips and the legs and the lower back. And we're going to work on it from a power perspective, too. For a high school athlete coming into the program, Coach Yox takes them back to the basics. The goal is to ensure each lift is done correctly so that the athlete gets the finest strength and conditioning workouts possible. Well, there's a lot of kids that come from great programs that have great lifting and conditioning traditions. And then there's other kids that were on the other end that are, are multi-sport athletes and they didn't get the time in the weight room or the individual conditioning that they actually needed. 
So I, I kind of put them all on the same level when they get here, no matter what kind of tradition they're coming from in high school. And we start them off slow. We teach them all the lifts, even if they know how to do them already. Generally, there's some, there's some differences that need to be made in those lifts. So we teach them all the technique and the lifts that we do. We teach them, you know, the different machines. We show them how to use the different machines that we use. The main difference is in conditioning and the intensity of the conditioning and the intensity of the lifting. That they, that's the main difference that they experience. You hear so many young guys say, well, i got to get used to the speed of the game on this level. Well, it's the same thing in strength and conditioning on the collegiate level. Work on, work on three. One, two, three. Work on, work. The weight room not only builds physical strength, but it instills a level of confidence and mental toughness that the Auburn football team takes with them to the playing field every Saturday afternoon. Time now for the FedEx. This week's Toyota Tiger of the game is tailback Ronnie Brown. Brown rushed the ball 33 times for 224 yards and three touchdowns in the 31-24 win over Ole Miss. Ronnie Brown, this week's Toyota Tiger of the game. Auburn up 14 to 3 as the third quarter starts, but it won't last long. Let's take a look. You knew you couldn't keep Manning down the whole day, Coach. No, we couldn't. Here's their first play, and uh, Roger Cood makes a great play on the fade route. They were going to go deep and get us off of them. We were playing real close, but I tell you, they did something good and it took us a while to adjust. Here's a terrific throw and catch to, I think, Chris Collins, one of their better receivers. And, but they know huddle is the first drive and really caught us off balance, but our defensive coaches did a good job of adjusting. We come back and start pounding it. The thing we want to do is just take time off the clock and keep Eli off the field. That's the best defense against him. We run out of downs and we have to punt, but this is a, a punt that uh, we'll remember right here because Damon put it right on the one-yard line. Good coverage by, by Rashad Walker and our punt coverage team. His touch punting has been so good in the last two Well, years. it really has, and uh, he's going to have to continue that. Here they come out of the end zone. They overthrow it. Uh, should be playing a little bit tighter to that guy. Here they run the fullback, and Reggie Torbor makes a great play inside. This should be a sack right here. We knock the center back, and Eli falls down, and Reggie would have gotten him anyway because of the inside blitz, but uh, we get to safety, and uh, that's a big two points. Watch how the center knocks back, steps on his foot, and we get to safety in the end zone, but Reggie's coming underneath the tailback and would have made the play anyway. Uh, here we come back. We get the ball, and, and uh, on our end of the field, big third down play, and we throw the dig route, and they were laying for it. 39 knocked the ball out of Silas Daniels' hands, and big turnover for them. Now we come back, and they throw a quick slant. Carlos Rogers playing outside, and they, they uh, guessed right through the quick slant for the touchdown. They hold us now, and after the next possession, and things didn't look very good here, but Damon really boomed one out. Our coverage teams were good, and we turned the ball back from the 10-yard line to their 30. Good turnaround for the punt return, punt coverage team. Here comes the big play. Yeah, here's a big play. Uh, really didn't get a lot on that ball, and there's a great block. Carlos Rogers on the interception. Watch this replay. The number one rule when you inter intercept a ball is the defense blocks the intended receiver. Watch number 11. Watch Mark Brown right here. Oh, good block, and uh, oh, just, oh, just how you draw it up. Good job of the defensive coaches and the defense. Here we come back, and next play, run a draw play inside. We catch them blitzing outside, and Ronnie Brown breaks a couple of tackles and goes in. And, puts us up. Now Now we have to go to two because it's a five-point lead. We've been pretty good on two-point plays, but let's, let's re-look re at that play. Look at the inside block of Ben Nylon on, on, the, on their two technique, and I tell you, we just get stronger and stronger running with inside with Ronnie Brown. Now here's a two-point play. We set it up. We run a flood route. We block the blitz the outside, and we slip the Volkswagen Trey Smith on the outside for the two-point conversion. Third that's straight two-point conversion? Three in a row, and that's very unusual. It's very hard to get a two-point play. Now here they come back and we're in uh, zone defense. We've been playing a lot of man. We tip it up in the air. Mark Brown does and and right there Mark Brown tips it up and then Horace Willis comes in and makes a great interception. Now we come back and we're in third and one. Here's the play that fakes everybody out including the cameraman. We kind of slip Lorenzo Diamond out. We ran this play against Mississippi State early in the year and uh, we got it down to Oh, 15, 20 yard line. Here we, run, here we run inside with the fourth quarter. We got a seven point lead. Now we're just trying to control the football. Here's a little play action pass. We throw it back to Ben Oldmanu and he's wide open. We walk in the end zone to make it 31 17. Got pretty good control, but knowing that Eli Manning can score a lot of points. A lot of points. Look at all those Auburn fans in the stands. I tell you, with great following. There's nobody travels better than the Auburn Tigers. Jason did a good job avoiding the rush and finding Obermann. Did a good job. Here's a, what we call 31 pitch. They, 
Watch that play out of Horace Willis. He gets blocked, he gets up, he makes a tackle for two yards. Tremendous play. Horace Willis played one of his better games. There's the athletic ability of uh, Horace Willis, too. He made another play, kind of back-to-back, -back, and here they catch us in man coverage, and, and they run a good route, and they just beat us in the end zone. And Again, you're not going to hold Eli down too long. Here's Trey Smith on the inside belly. Look at this. He carries him three or four yards down the field. Good blocking inside. They hold us. It's fourth and two, and I decided to go for the win. We make that. It's over. Damon kicked a good field goal, but, you know, we've been one yard off on all of our field goals. Those things are going to go good for us in the next few games. Here's a good pass rush by our defensive line. Lay on top of him. Make the clock run. Then he completes a third and long. Watch that going. pass by a kid named Fry Fogel. I tell you, tremendous catch. They've got some good receivers. Here's the quick pitch again on the outside to McClendon, and uh, we get him down. We're just trying to make the clock run. Here's a little isolation play to him. Now it's third and, and uh, seven. seven. And uh, we play zone defense. We catch him off guard a little bit. They thought we was going to be in man. And uh, we force him to throw it. And he throws it in the end zone. And we intercept it. And, and uh, Traverse Robinson comes up with another big play. Here's a play that we wanted to get. They used both their timeouts. This is third and three. Ronnie Brown just bangs up the middle for a first down. And this is the prettiest play in football when you're on the on, the, on the offense is taking a knee, and that's two weeks in a row we've done that. So, great game by our football team. Our fans is a big win for us. David Cutcliffe's team's got a good good team. It's tough to beat them on the road. They had the longest winning streak uh, in the conference at home. Coaches know to have a winning team, you have to have a great game plan. And when it comes to you and Auburn. One final thing, I remember that big first down they made there at the end of the game where they could kneel down and take the win. Well. That's two weeks in a row we've been able to take a knee at the end. It's a great feeling, but we've had a lot of, a lot of tremendous fans here that followed us over and looking forward to next week's homecoming game with a packed house. Louisiana Monroe, it is a 1 o'clock start. It is a pay-per-view telecast. You can contact AuburnTigers.com, and they'll give you all the information to get set up for the telecast. And we'll see you back here next week. Reverses, comes back to the left, and a handoff goes to Owens, off the right side, breaks a tackle, and he's in there. Touchdown, Auburn! Michael Owens. Season just start. The game is on. We got two more. It's time to go after it. It's for real now. It's like single elimination. We're coming back tomorrow. We're going to work. Great job. We got seven. Not many people thought you could win seven. We're going to win more than that. Great job. Good job Great man. job. Welcome. We're here in the Tiger Den where the Auburn recruits come before and after each game. And I'll tell you, Coach, uh, 15 minutes ago, this place was jumping. A lot of players here, a lot of recruits. Good day to bring recruits in because it was a 1 o'clock kickoff and they had a chance to get here. They had to, didn't have to get up early to drive to Auburn and then had a chance to get home before it got really dark. But this is a great place for recruiting, and we, we, we do uh, appreciate having this kind of facility to recruit. And the game turned the way you wanted it to. Get it over quick and get your front people on the bench. We wanted a chance to go out and play well early to give everybody a chance. We played everybody that was eligible, basically, to, to play. So it was a it was a good game overall, and, and we really played well. Uh, it was good to come out and play well, well early, and our young guys played uh, up to par, and uh, we got some guys healthy, so we're looking forward to next week. I noticed uh, Jason Campbell threw the ball a great deal. Very accurate. He's, he, the big thing about Jason is getting a lot more confidence. And, that's what it takes for a quarterback. He's, uh, he's throwing the ball very accurate, too, deep and short. So uh, we'll see what happens, but he's playing pretty good. Okay, and, and resting uh, a lot of the people, you held out several people, and does that mean you're going to be in pretty good shape next week? Yeah, uh, for this late in the season, 10 games into the season, we're in great shape. Uh, a lot of people are beat up more than we are, so uh, we're just looking forward now to going to the next two, and hopefully we can keep them healthy as we go. Okay, let's go to the Auburn dressing room. Yeah, you know, we wanted to come out and get out to a fast start, you know, get everybody in, and you know, we just wanted to work hard, and you know, we wanted to look real good, you know, look consistent. You know, that's basically what we wanted to come out. You know, we got to take this game very seriously like we do any other game. And, you know, we've been playing good with a lot of emotion. we got something going right now, and we want to take a step back. So we want to continue to come out and play hard. Rest some people with some Knicks, you know, Reggie, Marco, 
most of the D line, some of the linebackers got some rest, you know, for the young guys to get some experience and play and get ready for these next couple of games. You know, I got some experience, you know what I'm saying? I got I know what I gotta work on. I know what I gotta get better at. I'm somewhere, um, this is a great game to get the young guys involved. Um, last couple of games, uh, uh, some people got more playing time than others, and today, uh, everybody got in today. You know, we, uh, you know, obviously you got to go into, you know, every football game and, uh, you know, have a plan for, uh, you know, the first team. And, and, you know, in these type of games, you, you just hope you can get to the point where you can play some younger guys and, and um, you know, get them, uh, get the older guys at this point in the year some rest, which is well needed, and uh, get some more experience for the younger guys. So we got, okay, we got an opportunity to do that today. Yeah, it was fun. I thought they came out and, uh, you know, we threw the ball around early, and, and Jason did a good job. Ronnie got some carries in, tried to stay fresh and then get out of the game and get ready for next week. Offset eye in the backfield, and here's a play pick by Cobb. Goes to his right. He's in trouble. Dodges one tackle, two tackles. Going to throw on the run in the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! Robert Johnson somehow got open, and I don't know how Cobb ever found him. Again, we're in the Tiger Den, where Auburn recruits are entertained uh, on game day. And uh, the Tiger flew today, Coach. He did, he did fly, and it was... Uh, Good to have a great crowd, homecoming crowd. A lot of a lot of people come to homecoming that don't come to a game all year, but I'm sure that uh, they were excited about homecoming and seeing friends and, and former classmates and uh, also seeing a good football game. Game didn't start exactly the way you wanted. You wanted to get them three and out and score, but uh, you eventually got them out and then scored. You know, it's a great carryover for our defense, so this is a, a lot of the same offense that we'll see next week against Georgia. So a lot of things that we saw that we'll be able to go back and look at and see see what we did right and what we did wrong. Let's take a look. 84,000 at Jordan Hare. Good crowd. Senior day. I had all the things. And homecoming. Yeah. Great day. Great day for college football as we started. It was beautiful weather. Here they, they come out and they have a, what, a 16, 17 play drive opening the game. And uh, we rally around, start making some plays. We just made, missed too many tackles on the first drive. Fourth down here and two down on the 18. You stop them. Yeah, and they go for it and we stop them. Kind of took their out of them a little bit. Here we come back, and our game plan here was to try to get the ball down the field because they run the Mississippi State uh, defense. They put eight men on the line of scrimmage and force you to throw it, so we were going to take advantage of it early, and Robert Johnson makes a big catch. Gets a little bruised ribs right there on that first play, and he'll be back this week. There's Ronnie Brown on a counter play. Good block by Brandon Johnson. Here we come back with another play action. Look at this strike to Jarris McIntyre. Boom, right on the numbers. Good throw and catch. And we're going to have to have some of that the next two games. We're going to have to back them up and try to get a little room to run the football. Jason has really shown a great long touch lately. Well, he really has, and we work on it in practice every day. We throw a lot of long balls and work on our timing, and Jerry's is one of the guys that I think Jason has a lot of confidence in catching the football. He's, he's, he's done it before. Here they come back, and big hit by Ontarius Williams and, and the gang. Uh, Tavares Robinson, one of our seniors, Junior Rose Green, Wayne Dickens, good Third play with the seven. defense. Good. Third and seven, Mark Brown on the on the play, taking the first down away from him, and we make them punt. And here's uh, Trey Smith's first return as a punt return as an Auburn Tiger, and and uh, good job of making the first guy miss. Now we come back 30 on. yards getting up field. That's exactly right. Here's a counter play on the outside, good block by Ben Oban Obamanu on the outside. Here's a good good pass protection by the offensive line. That was third and seven. Another good throw and catch by Obamanu. They have a corner fire here, and uh, Robert Johnson does a good job of blocking it downfield. And third catch by Ben Overman is good, good uh, possession and series by him. And uh, Jason showed you some of his fantastic athletic ability here. Well, Pulling again, again the, well, the good thing about Jason is starting to stay in the pocket a little bit longer. In the past, when they had a corner fire to go behind him, he'd scramble out of the pocket. Good job by Jason. Learning on the run. Here they come back on defense. Tavares Robinson, the first contact. Uh, Lamarcus Rowell, Carlos Rogers. We're starting to play better defensively. Block was on then. Well, yeah, we had to block anytime they had a had two receivers on one side. We went to an automatic block and ball hit the ground. That's one of the rules in, in the kicking game. Don't let the ball hit the ground if at all possible. Here we come back and run a counter play. Good block on the outside by Marcus McNeil. A room should do downfield blocking. That's one thing we've got to get better at each week. Here's a good play action pass. Down the field on a wheel route to Trey Smith. That's a new play that we put into this this week. And good blocking by Cooper Wallace downfield. There's uh, Brandon Johnson on the first down carry down to about the two yard line. 
And now we just bang it in here with Brandon Johnson leading Ronnie Brown up the middle and good for a second touchdown. That's going to drive this guy back into the end zone. Yeah. It's, well, watch the first contact is for Brandon. He knocks him back, and there's Ronnie making contact. He's first first guy usually doesn't get Ronnie down. Good job of running inside. Good blocking to the offensive line. This is what you wanted, a 21 points first quarter. Well, and we were six for six inside the red zone. Uh, here they come back, and good break on the ball by Horace Willis. Here he rips his helmet off, and this is a good job of Horace keeping his cool. Don't lose your cool. He gets a 15-yard penalty, and we keep moving down the field. Here they get the ball back and run a screen pass, and we've got six or seven people on the pile. Uh, Mayo style needs not to pile on there. He jumps over and doesn't make contact, but, but good uh, Good job of using his head. Here we come back, get the ball. Trey Smith up the middle, breaking it for the, I think, the third touchdown of the game. Uh, fourth. Fourth oh, yeah, touchdown. Definitely. And so it's time to bring out the, the new troops. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have asked for a better scenario. No, that's what we want to do. We want to get all of our guys out to play. Here we come back and uh, on defense. And uh, Red Edmonds probably had one of his better games. That's two weeks in a row he's played good. Here's Here's the first carry of the tailback by Brandon Johnson. We put him back there just in case we're going to need him the next couple of games. Trey Smith on the fumble, Robert Johnson on the knockdown, and and uh, makes them turn the ball over. And instead of getting get them, they getting the ball back, we get a first and ten, <laughs> but we lose 20 yards. That's not the way you 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 want to want to draw it up. But uh, good heads up play by Robert Johnson. <laughs> First down at the uh, 29. Trey Smith on the little outside 37 balls is what we call that. And a little outside play, good blocking by Ryan Hockett. 35. Another one of our seniors. Here's a good play by Daniel Cobb coming in now for Jason Campbell. He makes a good play. Here's coming back again to Robert Johnson again. That's five catches, big day. Yeah, uh, big day. I think last two weeks have been two of his better games of the year. Defensively, we come back out, and there's John Terrace Thomas on the breakup. We get the ball back. Quick throw there to to uh, Ben Obanu. Here's it down the, in the red zone. Another good block there by Ryan Hockett. Good, good move to outside. Watch how Brandon runs here. He's tough to get down. He's in, in that one back set, right? right. He the ball. Here's, watch this play right here. Daniel does a great job of making two people miss those on the run to Robert Johnson in the end zone. Perfect throw, great catch. That was a big play by our offense score right before the half. Look at it again, and uh, 35 nothing. first half gives you lots of options in the second half. Okay. Well, it, we couldn't have drawn it up any better after this play than we emptied the bench the second half, got everybody in. Find homes, and uh, you know, life is sometimes never the same when you go through something like that. Let's go back a few years and uh, relive some moments with one of the great Auburn linemen, Wayne Gandy. Wayne Gandy won consensus All-American honors for his stellar performance in Auburn's undefeated season of 1993. He did not allow a single sack the entire year. We talk about it like it happened yesterday. Uh, we were even thinking about trying to find some kind of 10-year reunion, some kind of way to get everybody back together. Um, and hopefully maybe this is something that uh, maybe next year we can bring that whole team back to. Wayne was a number one draft pick by the St. Louis Rams in 1994 and now plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He believes the lessons he's learned here at Auburn have been a big reason for his success. Auburn taught me how to be a man, it taught me responsibility. Um, it seems like the older you get, the further you get away from that punishment that Coach Dye used to dish out, uh, the more you come to appreciate some of the things that uh, he taught you back when you were here. Wayne Gandy, an Auburn All-American, both on and off the field. Time now for the FedEx Air and Ground Game, brought to you by FedEx. Need reliable express or ground delivery services? Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx, the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. On the ground, take a look at freshman tailback Trey Smith rushing up the middle for 32 yards in the third quarter. Through the air, we feature wide receiver Jareth McIntyre, who's on the receiving end of a 33-yard touchdown pass from Jason Campbell in the first quarter. And that's this week's FedEx Air and Ground Game. FedEx, the ultimate air... Tiger of the game. 
So what options does one have with a 35 to nothing lead, Coach? The option of not playing starters. <laughs> and uh, we went back out, and I didn't really care how much, uh, how better they, much better they played or what, how we played. Unless it really got out of hand, we weren't going to put any starters back. And we stuck with our second, third, and fourth team, and it worked out pretty good. Here we go. Bad thing about an onside kick, Coach, is if it doesn't work, you're in bad shape. Well, you need, and you got to give it to them. They came out, and they were going to try to get the ball back and, and get back into the ball game. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't go 10 yards. Here we come and run the draw play. Good block by Michael Owens. Trey Smith making people miss. Uh, guys downfield, there's Rich Trucks downfield, one of our backup offensive linemen. Ryan Broom, good blocking up front. There's another good block of Ryan Broom. Good throw and good catch from Daniel Cobb to Trey Smith. Trey Smith had a lot of work uh, yesterday. A lot of work. Beaming you, in the you know what was good, too, is we got all of our offensive linemen in the game for an extended period of time, not just two or three snaps. They played 30, 40 snaps, which was good. Here's a good blitz for LaMarcus Rowell on third and long, but I tell you, that big receiver they got, so who's a true freshman, is going to be a good football player. And also, that quarterback they have is a freshman. Here they come over the top, and they get their first score, and, and uh, we're trying for a shutout. Here's Victor Horn on his first carry of the, of the year, and a good run by Victor on the outside. He needs to drop a little bit of weight, but he needs to get his quickness back because he lost a, a gained a little weight when his injury was there. There's fourth down. We went for it and didn't make it, and they come back and drive here. Watch this. Ball tipped up in the air. They catch it. We're going to get that out of our system. We don't want that to happen next couple of weeks. A lot of tipped balls yesterday. A lot of tipped balls. It really was. <laughs> here we come back. Michael Owens. Watch this. Michael Owens, one of our seniors, and what a great run this was. Uh, good run down the field. Michael you feel was, good for him. Yeah, Michael was one of the first guys that we signed when we got here, and I tell you, he's done a great job for us as an Auburn Tiger. We're going to miss him, him and his leadership and his, his personality on and off the field. Now they come back, and uh, we're trying to put some pressure up the middle on a five-man rush. We, they break to the outside and lose contain, and we're going to have to learn from that. Our second group is here. They come back, throw to a room should do. The outside quick, quick pass from Daniel Cobb, and... Uh, Good block there by Marshall Thornton. One of our other seniors, there's Cooper Wallace, tight end down the middle. Uh, we're making strides on these short passes. There's a good good uh, sneak by Daniel Cobb. Marshall Thornton blocking right here. And Michael Owens on the first touchdown. These are three seniors in the backfield. Daniel Cobb, Marshall Thornton at fullback, and Michael Owens at tailback. And I tell you, those are three real good quality people that are going to be successes in life. And uh, we're... I'm really proud to have had them on my team for the past four years since we've been here. You see a lot of numbers in that offensive line you haven't seen. A lot of guys getting a lot of work. A lot of guys getting good work. Uh, Jeremy Engel, there's a good uh, tackle by Travis Williams. Caused a fumble. We didn't get it. Uh, there's Dexter Murphy. Boy, old plugger Dexter. He, he doesn't have a lot of speed, but he's been with us and played hard and still got another year to go at defensive line. We've played him on almost every position. Here's Roger Hood back at returning punts. Watch this. He sets the... The wall up, he gets on the outside, good blocks down the field by Jarris McIntyre. They have a late hit right there and, and block in the back on them, and so we get the ball moved on down. This was the best day we'd had on special teams. So it's a big win, a 52-14 to 14 win. Coach, this makes Auburn 7-3, and three, and the table is set now for the two biggest games of the year. Yeah, two big games, and uh, we've got a lot of work to do, but we're playing the best football we've played all year, and it couldn't happen at a better time. Maybe the most encouraging thing you saw all day was that field goal at the end of the game. Well, you normally wouldn't kick a field goal at the end of a game like that with that much of a lead, but we needed Damon to have some confidence going into the next two games. And uh, from that area, you know, he had missed one quite recently, but it, uh, this one went through quite well. And uh, he kicked, kicked well, he punted well, and I think he's got a lot of confidence going in the last two. We'll be back in just a minute to talk about Georgia. Hi, I'm Bob Pippen. Are you satisfied? Or is life? Another memorable Iron Bowl in the books. Tommy Tuberville wins in Tuscaloosa again. Welcome back. Underdogs going in, respected going out. It's Auburn celebrating a state championship. Montgomery's Robert Johnson scoring the Tigers' only touchdowns, both coming in the first quarter. Quarterback Jason Campbell hitting the mark. Another great game by the sophomore. 
Alabama scored in the second half a short Santonio Beard touchdown, but the Crimson Tide fans left hanging their heads. It was Auburn's defense who was better, and the Tigers marking the fourth straight year. The road team wins the Iron Bowl 17-7. We play with emotion most of the year. And I think that's the biggest reason that we played so well in the last since the first quarter of the Florida game. But it was, uh, again, this group believes in, in what they're doing. It's just unfortunate we had a couple of bad things happen to us down the stretch. And this thing could have been a lot better, but it doesn't get any better than winning the Iron Bowl on the road. When last year, most of you in here, and most people said that we quit. We didn't quit, we didn't play well, but we didn't quit tonight. Yeah, this is okay. sweet as ever. I mean, you, you're always part of a team, and I had the opportunity to come out and play a major part today, and I, I did that, and the offense, they blocked well, the offensive line, I mean, everybody, the coaches, we played as one. The Tigers jumped back into the AP College football poll. Auburn is now ranked 20th. With LSU winning last night, there will be no SEC championship for the Tigers, so all that's left is a holiday bowl trip. The bowl picture is still a little fuzzy, but a good bet is the Outback or Peach Bowl. We should find out in a week or so. For Alabama, there isn't much time to feel disappointed coconuts. Bama taking on Hawaii next weekend. The Tide will head for the islands on Thanksgiving. Dennis Franchoni says he's glad they have another game to play. He doesn't want the seniors' final experience to be a tough loss to their in-state rival. And even though it's tough to take, he says that loss shouldn't put a sour taste on a good season. I mean, to play, this is a big game, and to, to not win the seniors' last game at home and those things, it, uh, it certainly doesn't taste very good, and, and uh, it shouldn't. Uh, I still have tremendous admiration and respect uh, for these seniors and what they've accomplished here in this football team this year. And Alabama drops five spots in the latest rankings. Crimson Tide now ranked 14th. The Atlanta Falcons are in second place in the NFC South after thrashing Carolina 41-0. Mike Vick, amazing again. He threw for 272 yards and two touchdowns. Warwick Dunn also scoring two TDs. St. Louis looking to beat Washington in the final seconds, but LeVar Arrington strips the ball from Kurt Warner. The Redskins recover, and they beat the Rams 20-17. Former Auburn Tiger Stephen Davis rushing for three touchdowns. Finally, Tampa Bay defensive lineman Warren Sapp going nutty after today's game against Green Bay. Sapp and Packers head coach Mike Sherman exchanging words after Sherman expressed his displeasure over a hit earlier in the game. Guns. Campbell takes the snap over the middle, wide open receiver at the goal line. Robert Johnson, nobody around. He's got it. Touchdown, Auburn! Not one person picked us to win. Not one person gave us a chance. Just our fans and ourselves. Guys, that's what you're doing with the hard work and emotion, believing in what you're doing. Great job of the coaches, great job of the players. Last year they said we quit. I don't think they're going to say that this year. We took it to them for four quarters. And when we leave here, I want you to go back out there and get them fans going. They're waiting on you out there. They're waiting on you. They're your fans. Go let them know. Great job, guys. Great job. <laughs> We greet you from uh, about the seven-yard line of Bryant-Denny Stadium, a quiet place now, but this north end zone was a thing of beauty about 30 minutes ago. What a great day for Auburn and Auburn athletics. It's, uh, it's great to win the Iron Bowl. It's, it's even sweeter when you win it on the road, and it's even sweeter than that when nobody, I mean nobody, predicted this team to win. You come to this game with uh, all of the running backs and the fullback down, not able to play. And all of a sudden, you established the run immediately. That may have been the key to the game. You, you had to. We couldn't. We couldn't let them, you know, lay their ears back and go after Jason. You know, throwing the ball every down. We just couldn't do it. You, nobody can. And so, uh, we challenged our offensive line. They did a great job blocking. But uh, and a 180 pound freshman. <laughs> true freshman, 18 years old. Uh, you know, 20 years from now, somebody will somebody see him on the street and ask him about this night. But you know, it's kind of a storybook ending for this season. We we started out. And, you know, we didn't play very well, you know, against Southern Cal, but we got better as year went on. And, you know, I'm proud of, of this team and the seniors because they've, they've kept fighting back, even 
those had some adversity during the season. Without the third quarter turnover, it might have been a shutout. It could have been a shutout, but we'll, we'll take 17 to 7 <laughs> any day. Okay. Well, we'll go to the dressing room and also we'll come back on the field because the players came back out and greeted their fans after the game. We've talked to some of them inside and some of them outside. Well, you know, I knew we had some injuries. We had some guys that had to come out and really step it up. Our fans were behind us and we believed in ourselves. And, you know, we were the only two, two groups that were together that believed we could win the game. It was us and our fans. And we did a great job and credit to our coaching staff getting a good game plan. Oh, yeah, no one gave us a chance. You know, we went out and a good week of practice. Up, so. It's always exciting to come over here because you know they fans, they're going to doubt you, they're going to throw stuff at you, they're going to curse you, they're going to fuss at you. Hey, when you come out with a victory, two, two guys out of three years? Oh, man, that's awesome. You know, the coach is saying that it's not, you know, an offense, not defense, not special teams, just the team out there today. And I think everybody came out and did their part and just really, it was a great team effort and a good offense win. It feels too good. Last game, Alabama big win. I'm speaking. We got to fight enough. All that we have to fight enough. I mean, when one goes down, when our family members go down, somebody else has to step up, and we know that, and that's what we did. Everybody said that we didn't have a chance to win this game. They said that we weren't going to be able to run the ball on them. They said we were going to have to pass the ball on them, and they also said we wasn't going to win this game. You know, they didn't give us a chance. We just came out, played hard, you know, did what we had to do to get the job done, and the scoreboard show. Oh, yeah, great win, great feeling, great way to go out as a senior. Yeah, they didn't give us a chance. They had number one defense in the country. We had our third string tail back, but you can't, you can't measure heart. Number one defense also don't matter. We had hard work done, we had to do with our fans and our teammates. What's up, Mr. Game Time? What's up, Mr. Game Time? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ha, ha! <laughs> Hood looks for some room, 15, 20, 25, weaves his way 30, 35, the 40, 45, and he's upended at midfield by the punter, Lane Bearden. Brian Denny Stadium, uh, a venue that's been kind to the Tigers, two wins, no losses, sir. Two wins in a row, and it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's great to come play with. You know, we, we played well for four quarters, and, uh, you know, we challenged our team that we had to run the ball, and we had to stop the run on defense, and it worked out that way. Let's go to the uh, first half as well. Coach, most of those uh, 10,000 folks there didn't think uh, Auburn uh, was out of it. No, it was a great, great Tiger walk, and it's good to have that, especially on the road. It gets you kind of psyched up for the game, and again, our player, players really in, enjoy and appreciate our fans coming out and doing this for them. They have to stand there for a long time waiting for the team to come, but it's a good group of kids. I tell you, you see a lot of young faces there, and we've got a lot of them coming back next year. <laughs> Ray Smith, he couldn't have known what was going to happen to him as he walked through those people. Well, no, <laughs> nobody ever really knows what's going to happen. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Beautiful night for college football or day. It's actually close to dark, but it uh, started off a little sunshine, and uh, here's the first one of the first plays running Trey Smith off off tackle to the right side. Good blocking up front. Here's our what we call get it play. Uh, uh, we fake inside and throw to Anthony Mix for I don't know 40, 50 yards and. Kind of got us in great field position. We took a sack and we had to punt. Damon had a good punt. Barely went in the end zone, so they get their first possession at the 20 yard line. They make a couple of first down. They moved the ball, uh, the, the alumni yardage pretty good in the first half. Between the 30s, they did a good job. And here's a play action pass that we covered very well with Carlos Dansby. But our defensive coaches had a good scheme of making sure we took away the pitch man and not and making the quarterback run and then taking away their play action. Third and eight. Third and eight and uh, good pressure right there by by uh, Don Terry's Thomas on the sack. Fourth well, and 10, they're going for it. Fourth and 10, and I tell you, they went for a lot of fourth downs. I think seven times and only got two of them. Here we run him out of bounds, and, and we get the ball. We come back, and uh, here's a great run by Trey Smith. I tell you what, this, this really broke the ball game open to, 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 to help the pass go and, and to really give our offense a lot of confidence early in the game. Made them respect the run. Here's a crossing route to Robert Johnson. Look at that move. I tell you, he's gotten better as the year's going on than he is. He has got a good future. He got one more year, and hopefully he'll uh, he'll come back and use it to his, his ability. Look at this move. That's pretty good for a 275-pound guy. Six six, and I tell you, he's you know just a, he makes a great target. And again, he's uh, he's gotten better. He's got a lot of potential. You talk about a fired-up bunch of guys. Watch this play. That here's an indication that everybody was ready to play. Right here, number 29, Derek Gray from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, makes a makes a tackle. He was. 
glad to go home and make a play. Here's a here's a reverse. And we complain about the hole right there, and evidently nobody saw it, and and they only get a few yards. But uh, you know that's the way it goes. Sometimes you get them caught, sometimes you don't. Here's the option play, which we had worked real hard on all year long. Reggie Torbor took the took the quarterback right here, and you see Don Terry on the pitch, and you know it just it's just one on one, and you got you got to make the tackle when you have the opportunity. Third and a mile. Third and long, going downfield. Junior Rose Green on the on the knockdown. Watch this punt return to Ryder Cook. I thought this one of the big keys, big keys of the game was a return game. Watch the blocks right there, and Roger takes it up the middle for about 35 yards. Uh, their punter had to make the tackle, and he wasn't fired up about that, as you can tell. Punters never are you know, fired up about making a tackle on on a return. But uh, our our special teams have gotten better. We we've had a lot of people hurt, and we've moved people in and out, but they have improved. Uh, here's Trey Smith again on another draw play up the middle. Good blocking by the offensive line. Uh, here we come back, and Jason gets a crossing route to Ben Open, new from Selma, Alabama. Uh, another home state product. Good job. Look at this play right here. I tell you what, this is a great call by our offensive staff. Uh, they had a full blitz on both linebackers inside. Uh, somebody must have blown the coverage. And uh, they left nobody right. down the middle. Isn't it? Yeah, watch this right here. They brought. Both linebackers inside and both both uh, outside linebackers outside. One of them has to cover the tight end, and obviously that a busted coverage, and we uh, we uh, were able to uh, get the points. Here they come back, and there's a little smoke draw play we were very concerned about. We stopped it. Here's another play where Roger Hood comes up and breaks it up. Our DBs were all over the field. Here's Jason looking for the, uh, the receiver to come open. Marcel Willis, one of a few seniors, and makes a big catch downfield. Good pass protection. Look at Marcus McNeil. Here's another catch by a true freshman and uh, Aroma Shadu. Got the first. And, and got the first. Now, and what, what's the scramble by Jason a couple of plays later? Scrambles to his right, puts pressure. Uh, they can't, they've had to stay in coverage, and he pulls the ball inside and uh, crosses field, runs for 19 yards. Seemed like he ran forever on this play. <laughs> Gained 19 yards and put us in great position to get some points. Set up this field goal. Here's a Damon Dufall field goal, and I mean he kicked that one right down the pipe and put us up 17 to nothing. I think he likes Brian Denny. Well, he's he's four or five in his career, and Brian Denny, and, and you know he has, he's had his ups and downs, but played has played well uh, for us consistently. There's a good play again on the tackle on the option play by Carlos Danby. Third and seven. Third and seven, and overthrown their horse Willis on the coverage. They punt and you have to punt and. 17 and up with six minutes to go in the, in, the, in the first half. Here's a good pass protection up front and a throw to Marcel Willis for the first down. It keeps the drive alive and keeps them off the field. Get it up for a short punt. Short punt here. They come back and run the draw play again. And I tell you what, our defensive coaches had a great plan for that draw. Here's a here's a little uh, corner route to, and uh, Roger Hood breaks it up for the fourth and play. 11. Fourth and 11. Watch this. We got good coverage. Force him out of the pocket, and he throws it for nine yards. And uh, and we go out to halftime. He had 17 to nothing. Boy, looking. Boy, looking. And he's going to throw long downfield. This one is intercepted. Intercepted by Carlos Rogers at the 14-yard line with 3:12 left to play. I expect Coach uh, the tape and those t-shirts will uh, fill a lot of stock. I challenge every every Auburn fan to buy one of each, give to somebody, even 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 their relatives out of state or whatever, because it'll be a it'll be a memorable item to have and be a great Christmas present. 70 nothing at the half. I, I think they were kind of stunned. So was I. <laughs> I mean, I think we all were because you know we, we knew how good their defensive front was. But you know, that goes to show you, you know, if you just just play hard, don't give up the big play on defense, and which we have a couple of times. And then offensively, just be patient and take what they give you. And you know, anything can happen. But uh, you know, our, our coaches did a tremendous job of coaching the entire game, especially the first half. Second half coming up in just a moment. Time now for the FedEx Air and Ground Game, brought to you by FedEx. Need reliable express or ground delivery services? Don't worry, there's a FedEx for that. FedEx, the ultimate air and ground game of the Auburn Tigers. On the ground, tailback Trey Smith scampered 51 yards in the first quarter to the Alabama 16, set up the Tigers' first score of the game. And that play is the one we feature through the air. A 14-yard strike from Jason Campbell to tight end Robert Johnson to make it 7-0 Tigers, a lead they would never give up. 
And that's this week's FedEx Air and Ground Game. What do you do with a 17 nothing lead at the half in a game of this magnitude on the road? What do you say? Well, I told them, the first thing I told them is we weren't going to change anything. We're not going to sit on the ball. Uh, this ball game's not over with. You know, we had a 14 to 3 lead last week, and we just we didn't set on it, but we didn't make plays. And uh, you know, the one thing that you don't want to do in the second half when you're up 17 points is don't turn the ball over. And we turn around and we get a ball tipped, and they get it, and they get a touchdown. But we fought back, and it was fun to watch our players regain their composure and keep the ball game under control. Let's look at it. Alabama gets it for the uh, opening drive of the second half. They need to make something happen. They come out and decide they're going to throw the ball a little bit more, play action, feel, and. I thought our linebackers and defensive backs really adjusted to it, and we continue to get get pressure on the quarterback. Here's a great uh, breakup of Horace Willis, and you know, our defensive backs just well, probably played one of their better games. Here we get the ball and come back with play action, and really the only miscue we have of the game, their defensive lineman tipped the ball there. Jason should have pulled it down and ran, but again, you 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 know you just have to learn from those situations. Here they come back and. And, uh, they got a short field now to score their only touchdown. Yeah, they come back, run the option, and we've got to get somebody up on the pitch. That's one of the few times that we let the pitch uh, pitch man go uncovered, and you know that happens. But here they come, and uh, what 105, 106 years since uh, they score. They score on us in Tuscaloosa, and there it is. You know, it took a pretty good while, but uh, <laughs> we'll take seven points a game. <laughs> right. Here's a good run by uh, Trey Smith. They were lined up off sides, and. You know, good job of him breaking tackles, good blocking up front. Mark Perry there, a good block from him. And, and uh, Monrico Crittington, good scramble here by Jason Campbell. Bringing it down past the 50-yard line. Uh, we went a little bit more shotgun in the second half to take the pressure off a running game. Marcel Willis on a big catch and big first down. Big third and ten play. Down inside the 35. Damon Duvall for a field goal and just barely pulled it to the left. And uh, you hate to see him miss that one, but uh, that's where it goes. Here's a... Pitch the outside on a little option play. Carlos Stansby is hard to get around him as much speed as he has. Here's a blitz up the middle. This is a fourth down call. They go for fourth down and we hold them about four yards short. Ball goes back to us. Here's fourth quarter now. Here's a draw play to, to Trey Smith up the middle. Did a good job. Breaking tackles again. Good blocking by Ben Nyland at center. Here's a here we make uh, Tyler Watt scramble. Red Edden from Montgomery, Alabama. And Tommy Jackson from Opelika, Alabama, on the tackle and on the sack. Here's the option play again. Hey, That's watch the worst official. spot I've ever seen. Watch though. him spot the, spot the ball at the yard line. He was a yard back. I don't know what the guy was thinking there, but here's a pump fake, and they going down the field. They they get a holding call there, and, and uh, plus we make the quarterback pull the ball and pull it down and run it. Here's a blitz by Mark Brown. Force him to throw the ball up in the air. Good coverage by Horace Willis. Hey, punt. Here we come back. No finesse here, Coach. No, run no the clock, finesse. huh? We're just going to run the clock. We've got seven minutes, and we can we can smell it here. Here they come back, pressure inside. Uh, we cause a fumble, and uh, and we they end up getting the ball, but uh, we knocked it out, and the clock keeps running. Here we've got another blitz by Mark Brown, one of a few seniors on defense, and I tell you, he played his heart out. Sacked him four times. Here's a long throw down the middle. we got pressure. Carlos Rogers up with interception, and... And our guys are starting to smell a win here. You can tell it. And they're all, oh, Albie's getting down on him. He's getting into it. Albie's going to pull something there. Today. Yeah, here's a here's a replay of that. And look at how Carlos jumps. And it's a good job of, of coverage. And you can tell we were kind of excited there. <laughs> uh, here we come back. Now we're running the clock. We have two minutes and 29 seconds. We still can't get a first down, but at least we took a little time off the clock here. And we don't make a first down. They come back and get the ball again. They throw a crossing route. Keep everybody in front of you. Make the clock run. They were almost out of time. Timeout. Fourth down play. Last play of the game. Over the middle. One of our linebackers tips the ball. The Auburn Tigers win one of the biggest games that's been won around here in a while. I tell you, you can tell on the face of our players. They're excited. It was a big win for our football team, our university, and the Auburn family. Uh, you know, it's been a long year, but uh, we just need to stay positive and uh, confident because this is a young team that's going to get better and better and we're looking forward to the future. I can't think of a better way to end this season than tonight. Well, it happened on a different note. First game seems like a long time ago, 10 years ago, that we played USC in the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. We played a very tough schedule. We played with a lot of young players, and we played with a lot of injuries. And when you, when you look, look going back through it, you know, we could have had a few things happen to make this season better. But the one thing that I'm proud of is we fought. We didn't give up ever. We kept getting better, 
Our fans stayed with us, and uh, we're a much better football team now than we were even at the beginning of the season. I think your sponsors are the most good out of here. Well, <laughs> thanks for all the sponsors. You know, we couldn't do it without our sponsors, and we we'll want to thank them for supporting Auburn football and Auburn athletics, and uh, I'm sure from, from them, from us, happy holiday season, and we look forward to next year and possibly a, a championship game in a couple weeks. Okay, let's keep our fingers crossed, and we'll see you, and we'll let you know immediately uh, when the bowl situation develops. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next year.